search for Huru. Thank you so much for joining us. As we always do before we get started, we just want to thank you all uh, for, for joining us. It really means a lot. Again, thank you all for joining us uh, today. Also, hit that like button. Shout out to Junin Zone. Exactly. Smash that like button when y'all get in. Again, smash that like button when y'all get into the chat room. Hit that like button. Uh, like, share, and subscribe, everybody. Also, subscribe. Also, share the content. Uh, this is very valuable content. So we want every we want to make sure this reaches everybody. Uh, become a monthly Patreon. Patreon.com. Search for Uhuru. Again, Patreon.com. Search for Uhuru. Become a monthly Patreon. Really uh, appreciate your guys' support. And then go to DynastyMirror.com. Go to DynastyMirror.com. While you're there, make sure you get Sales Motivation 101. Get off your button cold call. Again, Sales Motivation 101. Get off your you-know-what and cold call. Make sure you go grab that on DynastyMirror.com. Again, guys, go to DynastyMirror.com. Grab the book. Uh, join the email list as well. Subscribe to the email list so you guys can stay up to date in regards to what's going on with the brand. Uh, let's see here. Shout out to Dynast. These get me through my work day. You are welcome. So with that being said, Abnormal is dope i hope you have your book your kind your uh your merchandise hope you have something abnormal is dope again if you guys find value in this please share the content uh and contribute that really means a lot if you find value in this you know so since we are adding value to your work day reciprocate that yeah. so again like share and subscribe it april 21st to the 30th april 21st to the 30th we are going to sierra leone April 21st to the 30th, we're going to Sierra Leone. We're going to have a great time. Again, we are going to have a great time in Sierra Leone. The mountain lion, the mountain that looks like a lion. That's what it means in Portuguese, Sierra Leone, the mountain that looks like a lion. So we're going to have a great time in Freetown and Bo and everywhere else we're going. So please join us. Go to searchforhoover.com if you guys want more information on that. Without further ado, without this man right here, if this man did not light that African fire in me, there would be no Sierra Leone. Instead, we'll be saying, uh, let's go to uh, Rio de Janeiro and run around uh, Coco Cabana Beach, whatever it's called. And, you know, it, it, yeah, yeah, I'm not going to get into it. But yeah, <laughs> that's where we'll be going. We'll be going to Brazil yeah. or Dominican Republic or probably Thailand or where else? Columbia, I don't know. So shout out to this brother, Yishak Abraham. In 2011, he lit that fire in me. Again, he lit that fire in me to go to Tanzania, and I did. As you guys know, there would be no search for a guru without this brother, Yishak Abraham, lighting that fire. Like I said, I, was, I would be in Brazil. There will be a search for uh, Rio de Janeiro. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> So without further ado, yeah, we have right. our brother uh, Yishak Abraham on with us today, and we want to discuss living the African illusion versus living the African reality. And you know, Yishak could definitely uh, explain, especially when it comes to the finances portion. Um, you know, I think the idea or the misinformation that's going going around when it comes to Africa is, you know, you show up to Ghana, you know. The chiefs are going to be at the airport waiting for you. They're going to yeah. escort you to your free land, you know. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you know, uh, is dirt cheap? You know, this free, that free. Now, the cost of living is definitely cheaper there, of course, than here. But, you yeah. know, we, we there's a certain lifestyle we want to live when we get over there. And with that, it's going to take finances. Uh, you know, there's a certain way we want to contribute. And, and leave an impact and add value to the continent of Africa. And with that, you know, it's all centered around finances. I mean, we could dance around it. We could say we hate capitalism. We could say we hate this ism. We hate that ism. At the end of the day, as Brother Fitzgerald Stevens always says, either you have the money or you don't. That, that's, that's, that's when it comes down to. Either you have the money or you don't. So, you know, here, you know, through financial literacy, uh, financial education. Uh, you know, we are, you know, we want to provide opportunities to those for those who want to create uh, their own, we'll say, low cost to entry franchise 
in which you could um, support yourself as you uh, fulfill and focus and build and write your uh, Africa plan. So this shock Abraham. Go ahead, brother. Well, I'll tell you, it's it's a, it's a funny when you were talking about uh, in 2011, when we had that talk about going to Africa. I'll tell you, my own journey has started. I went to Africa for the first time in 2007. And, you know, just like you were talking, I, I really didn't know what I was going to experience when I went there. But, you know, just like I introduced you the opportunity to go, uh, another brother introduced me the opportunity to go as well. So, you know, given that chance to be able to see the continent, um, I took it because I always wanted to go. But, you know, people had always told me years ago, you know, my family is originally from Nigeria. I have never been to Nigeria, even to this day. And they were like, you know, don't go over to the country without having the tour guide and this, that, and the other. Because if you go, you know, something might happen to you or whatever have you. And mind you, you see all of the different things that are happening over in Nigeria right now. You know, I mean, it's it's a reality. There are different things that happen in some of the countries that you're going to go to. But Africa is a continent. It is not a country. So right. there are different countries inside of Africa. And in different countries, different things happen in different countries. So um, the brother Wahid, um, Sean Ware is his name, but he took the name Wahid. He, um, he introduced me to the opportunity to go because he went to Africa a few years before that. And he was actually living in Uganda at the time. And he said, if you want to go over to Africa, and then what spurred him to go to Africa and you just go back and back and back, he watched the Panther in the Jungle. And he was like, oh, I want to go and see the brother over in Tanzania. Pete O'Neill. So, huh? Pete Pete O'Neill. O'Neill. That's correct. Yeah. So he went to, uh, or they call him MZ Pete over in Tanzania. So he said, I want to go over and visit the brother Pete O'Neill over in Tanzania. So he didn't know anyone. So he ventured over without knowledge of anyone. So him and another brother went over. They went and stayed with the brother Pete, MZ Pete over in, um, in, at his land that he had over in Africa. Well, he still has over in Africa. And he actually does a lot of work. I would look him up if any of you are wanting to go over to Tanzania. He has a beautiful land over in Tanzania. He also does an orphanage for children over in Tanzania as well. What he does is he have people come over and they come and bring their skills and things of that nature to help with the children to be able to educate them on different things. So if you have knowledge of, you know, computers, you have knowledge on, you know, whatever it is that you know, you can go over and teach those children those things. But he went over, he met him. And then from there, he bought land over in Tanzania. So he knew I wanted to come over to Africa. So he communicated with me in 2007. I went over to to, um, Tanzania and actually he was gone by that time. He already moved to Uganda. So he just connected me with all the the people that he knew in Tanzania and it was very refreshing. But what I did was on the journey, I said I wasn't going to just go to Tanzania Um, because you can do layover flights. I said, I'm going to go to Egypt first. So I went to Egypt. I did a layover for the day. So I think we got there like six o'clock in the morning in Egypt. I stayed over the whole entire day to the next day. And this is when Egypt Air used to give you a free hotel room when you had a layover flight. So they don't do that anymore. But they don't? Nah. So they I know, don't I know, I know uh, Turkish Airlines does and uh, Royal Air Morocco does. If you have yeah, a- yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they had a lot of turmoil that took place in, in Egypt. So they changed all of the things that they used to do. But I, I had a layover flight. So I went to see the pyramids and everything. And I, I rode a horse over by the pyramids and it was extremely dirty over there. It wasn't what I thought it was going to be. They've since cleaned things up by now. But back in 2007, when I went, it was not, you know, it was not what the movies make it out to be. It was a bunch of bottles everywhere, you know, tourists, a bunch of tourists that came to see the pyramids. They had their water bottles that they were drinking. And they just threw the water bottle there on the ground, whatever trash that they had with them. It was very well, very unkept. When you got into the area where the pyramids was at, you came in through a broken wall and they had two guards that were sitting there next to the pyramids. It wasn't very organized, all that other stuff. 
I actually went to a taxi cab driver that I got at the hotel. And he took me around to all the different places. I paid him like $50 US. And he was my tour guide for the whole entire time that I was there. Mm -hmm. Took me, got fabric, all kinds of stuff. I, I did a lot of things that I went. But what I realized was that, you know, the image that we have in our mind of different places is not exactly what it needs to be. So like we were talking about the, the other day that we were on, you and I, Dinus, was people have to be prepared when they go to these different places. So I think I took $1,000 with me mm -hmm. when I went to, um, to this whole entire trip and I didn't spend all the money. And when I went, I stayed for three weeks in Tanzania. So now just imagine, I'd already bought my ticket and everything. So I'd spent for the whole journey, the whole thing, I think about $1,200 for the flight and the connector flights and all this stuff. Cause I bought my flights inside of uh, Tanzania cause I went to Dar es Salaam too. So I, I paid for all my hotel, paid for everything ahead of time. So this is another thing that you might want to think about if you want to go to Africa. The cost of things is totally different if you're paying on this side. So I didn't pay for it myself personally. The person that I connected with, who uh, Sean introduced me to in Africa, he had already bought all my tickets to everywhere that I was going to go. Yeah, so I think it, I think it's different now. I think uh, it's kind of changed. I think it's similar now, especially with like Airbnb and stuff now. Like it's very uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But what I'm talking about is the flight because the flight that I bought inside to go from Arusha to Dar es Salaam, mm -hmm. if I would have bought that ticket from okay. the US, it would have been much more expensive. Right. The ticket there cost me like $50. Hey, yes, you know, when I flew from, and guys, hit that like button again, hit that like button. When I flew from Arusha to Zanzibar, I got uh, this, I got this, I had, I, they, um, <laughs> so the flight was filled. Oh, there was a jumper seat right next to the jump pilot. Flight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next, jump seat flight. Right next to the pilot. Yeah. <laughs> On that flight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but see, these are the type of things that people don't know. You know, they're going over to the continent and they're thinking every flight is one of those big jumbo jet type flights. Well, no, every no. flight was not like that. You know? Plane. Yeah. I was on a propeller jumper plane. Yeah. And you felt every single move that plane made, you felt it when you were inside of the flight. Right. So, you know, and then there's a weight uh, limit as well. So you can't bring all of your stuff and everything and get on that jumper plane. You know, it was like, that's why they told me, okay, these trips that you're going to make, you're going to make them while you're here on your trip. Not like when you're going back home and you got all of your stuff. So the smaller the flight you get on, the least amount of stuff that you're going to be able to take. They might have to put your stuff on another plane. So you don't want to go through all that. All right. So you got to make sure you plan ahead. The other thing was when I actually got to Zanzibar, I realized the cost of things was so much cheaper if I pre-bought all of my things on my way there. So I had somebody who was already taking care of me as far as transportation was concerned. I already had the hotel taking care of all of these things were already done before I got there because it was a different price for things if I was paying with, with, with U.S. dollars. So me paying for it with U.S. dollars, they were going to already overcharge you. That was the thing that I realized at the marketplace too. When I went to go buy food when I was in Tanzania, one time, only once, I went to the market by myself. Yeah, you can't go by yourself. Yeah, you definitely yeah. go by yourself. And I tried to do my own negotiation. Oh, it was, it was horrible. I, no. I overpaid for everything. And then I went with Toda. I introduced uh, Dinas to Toda, uh, the mm -hmm. gentleman who does transportation and everything in Tanzania. And it was like night and day. I went and I was like, Toda, I paid this amount the other day when I came. And he was like, yeah, that's because you came by yourself. Mm -hmm. you know. And there was some times when I told them, Hey, I, you know, I want to be able to, you know, I, I want to be able to go by myself. And they were like, that's nice, but you want to go with somebody else because you want to make sure that, you know, the one time that I did go by myself when I went to Dar es Salaam and I went on the bus, I told Dinah the story the other day, I got on the bus and for some reason it just wasn't sitting well with me. I was thinking to myself, 
I need to ask somebody. So I said, hey, am I on the, bro, I'm going to Dar es Salaam. They were like, no, you're on a bus to Moshi, which is the total opposite direction to Dar es Salaam. But the interesting thing I realized, it's more, much more hospitality there than it is here in the United States because they actually called ahead to the other bus and they waited for the bus to come so that I could just transfer over to the other bus to go to Dar es Salaam and they didn't charge me any additional money. And that would have never happened here in the United States. You would have had to get another ticket and it would have been all kinds of other mayhem and it would not have been, went down well. But there, that's not what happened. So whatever reality that you know people have told you about Africa, I'll tell you, different places, man, some of the most hospitable people that you ever want to meet in your whole entire life. You know, the first time I went, I stayed at a hotel. Second time I went, you know, told her the same gentleman, he told me, you don't got to get a hotel. He said, man, you can just come stay at my house. And I stayed for a month and a half that time. And I gave him a hundred dollars US for a month and a half stay at his house. So it's better that you know people because it'll create a different experience too. Guys, again, hit that like button. Um, again, hit that like button. So when we say the illusion versus the reality, like what are some of the uh, misconceptions? Uh, you uh, yeah, well, you know, people think I could just go over there uh, dead broke and, you know, everything will get taken care of. You know, I, I'll just figure it all out. And I tell people there's there's no public assistance in Africa. So you're not going over to Africa thinking, you know, something's going to be taken care of for me and I just have everything taken. No, you got to already have your finances together before you go to Africa. The other thing is all of the opportunities that you're going to encounter over in Africa, you're going to need finances to be able to participate in those. So I used I used to have a um, tour company that I had over in Tanzania. Um, I invested in, you know, mining, uh, you know, ventures and all types of different things. You know, I used to bring uh, medical supplies over to the clinics over in Tanzania as well. Um, but you can't do any of those things if you're broke. <laughs> you know, when you bring your skills and your talents and different things of that nature, you bring it. Now, mind you, there's people over there who have money, but they're not going to give you their money to, you know, to get you into the ventures and different things of that nature. Oh, you're going to have to invest, you know? So the amount of money that you have to invest is different when you know people, but also you want to be bringing value just like in anything that you, you know, that you benefit from, you want to bring value to it as well. So it, it, it allows you to be able to help people when you get there. And then it allows you to be able to, you know, do business with people. But I told, like I told a lot of the business owners over and Arusha, where I was at, I told them, here's the interesting thing that I realized. People have misconceptions on both sides. So people here in the U.S. have a misconception of people in Africa, and people in Africa have a misconception of people in the U.S. They think everybody has money in the United right. States. They think Man, like I showed because some you're from the United States, you have money. I showed some people uh, images of Skid Row in Africa, and they just, they, they just couldn't believe yeah. it. Yeah, they can't believe that kind of stuff. They can't believe that in the, in the land of milk and honey, where they believe the streets are laid with gold, that someone could be homeless. You know, someone cannot have money. That you know, but that layer of people being indigent, you don't see the same exact thing in Africa like you see here in the United States. Even with people who are so-called quote unquote impoverished, they still have basic necessities, even when they're living in poverty. Right. Unlike here in the United States, I think poverty is worse here in the United States than it is in Africa. It's not, it's not a thing. It is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Poverty is worse here in the United States than it is in Africa because people think impoverished here where you don't necessarily don't have to have a lot of money, but you'll have an impoverished mentality where you don't think to yourself, there's ways that I can you know, get out of this situation. There's different things that I can do. I can create opportunities for myself. Realistically, United States is a great place to be, to have a mentality that you can change. You do not have to be born poor in the U.S. and stay poor. Like you could be born without anything. I was just watching a documentary on Master P. You could be born indigent, like no money, your parents been on welfare, all those other things like that. 
and then you can bring yourself to another different level by way of having small principles of, hey, get you a mentor, somebody who can show you how to be able to do it. You know, being in a company that we're a part of, you know, mentorship has been one of the biggest things that's assisted me because I didn't have any background in business. I didn't know anything about running a business or anything of that nature. But because I had people who could show me exactly what to do, it could help me avoid the pitfalls, you know? And I think that's the thing. I think a lot of times with people planning to go to Africa, they say to themselves, I just want to go. Like, you know, how many times I think I've heard the stories of people just selling all of the stuff that they have and then just going over to Africa and thinking, I'm, you know, because the cost of living is different, I'm just going to be able to go over there and just figure it all out as I'm over there. And, you know, it doesn't work that way. You got to make a game plan. You got to have a, a plan to how you're going to execute those things. I was talking to Dynasty the other day. It's so interesting because, you know, a lot of people say, oh, I live off the land. This is another thing that I hear a lot of people say. And I ask people, well, do you know what the growth cycle of the food that you're going to grow? Like, do you know how long it takes for that food to actually flourish? And you can make sure you can, you know, live off of, you know, I tell people the story of avocados is so interesting. It's like it takes seven cycles for you to be able to grow those avocados. But if you go over there and say, oh, I'm just going to do this or do that. I'm going to grow this, grow that. You don't know if the land is even going to take what you're going to grow. You know, you don't have the fertile, you know, or the knowledge of planting these things. All of those things are important. But you have to have the knowledge first before you go. You have to understand what you're getting yourself into before you venture over. So I think that's one of the biggest illusions, you know, that you don't have to have any information, that it'll all be taught to you when you go over to Africa. Guys, again, hit that like button. We have 136 people watching. Please get the likes up. Again, hit the like button. Also, go to dynastmirror.com and get your copy of Sales Motivation 101. Get off your you-know-what at cold call. And then April 21st to the 30th, if you're going to Sierra Leone, shout out to Fabian, who's in the chat room. I want to shout out this brother, Fabian, man. Uh, Fabian has been one of my biggest supporters uh, of Search for Huru. This is the second tour he's coming on. He buys all my merchandise, my books. Uh, shout out to Fabian, everybody, in the chat room. Really appreciate that, brother. Uh, Fabian yeah, also, also is a voice of reason and counsel for me. <laughs> I, I, need, I need to put him on payroll. <laughs> you know, yeah. we need that. You know, your associations are everything. You know, yeah. yeah, you're the sum total of the five closest people that you have around you. So if you don't have stable minded people, if you don't have people that you can go to for counsel, what are you going to have? Hey, nothing. Because, <laughs> you know, it, it's funny you said that, you You don't understand the number of elders I speak to that always say, I wish the conversation I'm having with you, Dinus, I wish somebody would have had this conversation with me when I was younger. You don't understand yeah. the number yeah. of. Yeah. That's why it's so important for us to be able to share this information with people. That's why this show is just so, you know, influential and important. And this day and time, you know, I mean, how many times in our lives? Have we had someone to be able to kind of paint a picture for us, right. to show us what we need to do step by step to be able to get to the things that we want? I I, I said this, you know, it's so funny because all of the things that I, I, I talked about in conversation over the last week, it's like I'm repeating it again. It just seems like it was all on time information. But I tell people all the time when I grew up, I'm 50. When I grew up, there was no Internet. So if I wanted to learn information, there was only two ways to learn that information. One, you needed to have a mentor, somebody who would be able to teach you what they what you needed to do to be able to be successful. Or two, you'd have to have a very good set of encyclopedias that were up to date, that could give you the information that you needed to be able to succeed in the areas that you wanted. The other thing was, some of those encyclopedias didn't do what YouTube does right now, which is step by step. You can literally go to YouTube University and whatever you want to learn how to do, there's a video, there's multiple videos showing you step by step how to be able to do it. anything that you want to be able to do. They got online mentors. I mean, you can literally be from anywhere and you can learn how to be successful. But now, 
because information is so readily available, I think this is the day and time where people are the less mo where, excuse me, the least motivated to be able to do things because it's information overload. They'll start learning something today, and literally tomorrow, they'll be off of that thing and on to something else. And they'll be going from subject to subject to subject to subject, never mastering any of those subjects. You know, this is literally the jack of all trades, masters of none day and time. And this has also been the most felonious day and time too, because you had a lot of people who've been pretending that there's someone that they're not. They have all these YouTube videos oh, yeah. oh, yeah. making themselves out to be somebody like I'm this multi-millionaire, you know, I'm standing in front of a Lamborghini. And, 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 and it's Yeah, and, 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 and Yeah, yeah, and, and they don't got a pot to piss in or a window to throw it out of. And I'm like, you gotta vet people nowadays too. How do you, how do you vet that, uh, Yashuk? As far because you know you see these all these people on uh, YouTube and also on uh, Instagram, they pull up in a Phantom, hop out, yes. Yes. bag, Louis Vuitton bag, yes, clear jet, you know, and That's it's right. just like That's right. Pretentious, you know, yeah. they're pretending to be someone. Well, I'm gonna tell you what I learned over the years, uh, and I've been around quite a few multimillionaires, and here's what here's what I've learned. I've learned the majority of those people, when you see them, that you would not know that they're a multimillionaire. So I, I, I used to um, talk, well, I, I still talk, but we used to talk much more frequently than right now since this coronavirus has been going on. But the, um, the ex-CEO of Dole and Pinkerton, right? Uh, his name is Michael. Uh, I used to talk to him all the time. I actually met him on a flight so he has a estate up in Washington State. Mm -hmm. It's called Eagle's Nest, and it is beautiful. And I met him on a flight. Um, on a, now, mind you, I didn't met him. I didn't meet him on a private flight. I met him on a regular flight. Mm -hmm. It just happened to be first class in a regular flight, but it was a regular flight. It wasn't a private jet or anything. And he he made millions of dollars as the CEO of Dole. Uh, enterprises. And I talked to him on an airplane. It was like a two hour flight from Washington to, to Los Angeles. I talked to him on a flight and I was just sharing with him some of the things that was going on in my business, getting some counsel from him after I found out what it is that he did. Mm -hmm. And I asked him, I said, how could someone, if they wanted to get mentored by you, you know, what would they, what would they do? The paper, same scrap paper that he was showing me business theory and all types of things from, he wrote his telephone number down on a paper and said, that's how they get me to mentor them. Exactly what I did, which was ask him. And that's, he said, that's how you get a mentor, mm -hmm. just by asking. So here's how you vet people. You vet people through looking at their life and you look at the things that they've executed through their life. See, a person who has information to give to others they're free with information. People who are, you know, who are pretending, well, every piece of information they give, they charge for it because they're not really rich. You know, they don't, they don't see what they're doing as giving back to people or being able to educate people on how to be able to, you know, get into a different space. So there's a book, it's called The Go-Givers. And the first principle and the goal givers is to give without the intention of seeking something in return. See, people who are successful, they know that they have to give. Like for them to be able to receive all of the things that they receive, there's a component of their life where they have to give to others. But now there's also a component of life is being a reciprocal because, you know, some people, they, they're hard to you know, take anything, like even a compliment. When a person is complimenting them, they're, oh, no, no, you know. No, yeah, no. yeah, yeah. I, it's not that big of an idea, but it is because that opportunity, look, I always use entertainers as, as, a, um, as a focal point. So there's a lot of, um, you know, sometimes when entertainers go to these big award shows, they have what they call gift bags. And, and these gift bags, 
They have all of the high price items inside of these gift bags and the entertainers get these items for free. They don't pay any money for it. And people always ask me, they say, well, why are they giving it to this entertainer and the regular people, you know, we got to pay for it. Well, because if that entertainer has it on, guess what's going to happen? All of the people who follow them are going to be like, I'm going to get that too. I'm going to buy those Beats headphones. I'm going to get that Bose stereo system because I seen my favorite artist. I saw it in their house and I'm going to go get it too. So it's all marketing. Yeah, sure. So uh, Anthony Robbins once said he gets more free stuff now being rich than he That's did. Right. Oh, yeah. He's right. more free meals, free everything yeah. now yeah. being rich yeah. than he did when he, when he was poor. And that's what that goes back to talk about what we were saying in the last broadcast was it's the amount of value that you bring to others. You know, the more value that you give to others for free, the more you'll get in compensation for yourself, because now you, it's like what you give is going to come back. It's all reciprocal. The things that you put out are going to come back to you. But it's also in your beliefs, too, because if you're mine, you just believe Nothing goes right for me. You know, everything I do fails. The universe is going to give you back exactly what you feel you deserve. It's going to just give you what you feel. You know, if you stay in a positive mentality, positive things can come to you. But if you're always in a negative state where you just like, you know, uh, woe is me. Things are always bad. Nothing goes good for me. Well, nothing's going to go good for you. And it's always going to be woe is you, you know. Guys, what we're going to do, we're going to open up the lines and take a couple questions. And then also after that, uh, we'll go ahead and get into uh, what me and, uh, you know, me and Yishak have partnered on. So, guys, please uh, email me if you want to call in to ask a question. Uh, Uhuru at searchforuhuru.com. That is the email. Uhuru at searchforuhuru.com. That is the email. Send me the email and I will send you the link and you can ask your question. Now, uh, yes, let's talk about our crusade. And guys, basically, so what we do, and I mean, I, I want to pay, I want to give you guys the bigger picture so you guys see the bigger picture. So, you know, I've been going back and forth to Africa. And I think one thing, the conversation that a lot of people dance around in, when they're in this space or try to avoid is the finances conversation. Like, yeah. how are you, what are you doing? How are you able to sustain yourself? What are you doing over there? Uh, you know, it's the, it's the whole finance question, okay? How can you truly make an impact on what, whatever income you have or don't have? Okay, this lady, she's already grad, she's already retired, so she's pulling her pension or whatever, so she's straight. But you know, that, that's the question that people uh, always ask in regards to how can I sustain myself on the continent and go back and forth. Uh, you know, on one end, you have, in fact, yes, I in fact, this is a question I want to ask you, yes, for the people that are like. I want to move to Africa, but I want to completely pull out of the West. Uh, even if you are earning a dollar in America and using that to finance your Africa plan, you're still feeding the beast here in America by still utilizing their system. So, so that's one of the most disillusionary thoughts that I could ever hear a person say. And I've heard a lot of people say that. So here's the interesting thing. I always ask people, do you go to the gas station? And it seems pretty funny, but it isn't. And Because if you go to the gas station, you're feeding a system. Guess what? If you spend money in Africa, you're feeding the U.S. system too. Because things that go on in Africa have components that are inside the United States. So here's the thing that you have to realize. I wouldn't worry about the, you know, this this bigger picture thing and all this other stuff like that, the most important thing that you should worry about is how are you going to sustain yourself? So if you're pulling from a pension plan, like Donnie said, made mention, if you're pulling from Social Security and different things of that nature, well, here's something that a lot of people might not be aware of. Back in 2035, the, the Social Security system that you know it today will not be the same. And here's the reason why. Because there are more people drawing off of Social Security right now than are putting into Social Security. It totally turned backwards because the baby boomers are retiring. They're the biggest um, grouping of people, 73 um, million people were born between the time of 1946 
1964. Those baby boomers are pulling from their retirement funds. For the next 18 years, they're going to be drawing out over $76 trillion that's going to be coming into the um, to our system of finances. So here's the reality. If you don't have financial wherewithal, if you don't have the ability to be able to manage your money, I don't care where you're getting the money from. You can go over to Africa and, you know, but if you don't have finances coming in, it might be cheaper to live in Africa, but you're thinking short-sighted because you still have to thrive wherever you're at. Just imagine, because there's a lot of people right now who moved over to Nigeria. Look at what's happening in Nigeria right now. People had to leave Nigeria so that they won't get caught up into different things that's happening in Nigeria. They had to come right back to the United States all over again. But guess what they couldn't do if they didn't have any money? They couldn't leave. They were caught because they didn't have enough finances to be able to fly out. Just look at the coronavirus. I know people who went over to uh, Nigeria, who came out of Nigeria, mind you, and it wasn't time for their flight. And they paid over $5,000, almost uh, one lady paid like $7,000 to get a flight out at the last minute when all of the turmoil was taking place with the coronavirus. So what you got to understand is I don't care where you go, you still have to have flexibility. And that flexibility only comes with having money. Mm -hmm. So, guys, again, the uh, the send me an email, who at search for who or who at search for who or if you want to join the conversation again, the email is in the chat room. Uhuru at search for uhuru dot com, and make sure you go to dynasty dot com. Subscribe to the email list, buy your books, um, and all that good stuff. So, guys, the bigger picture when it comes to dynasty mirrors, we're building a bridge between Africa the diaspora through arts, commerce, and culture. Now, the commerce part is very important. So, as far as the art and culture. We do cultural uh, exchange and excursions and trips to Africa. So that's why we're doing uh, the trip to Sierra Leone, April 21st to the 30th. So you guys could put 10 toes on the ground on the continent. So we're going to uh, Sierra Leone. And also, too, you know, Sierra Leone and Liberia were countries founded by us, established by us. You know, I know everyone goes to Ghana. Nothing against Ghana. Nothing against Ghana. Of course not. But the the original year of return was 1822 in liberia providence island in marovia you know though so sierra leone in in in, in freetown in sierra leone i mean in liberia very very important so we're going there april 21st to the 30th but the commerce portion you know uh, i think uh one part as far as you know generating that income so you could live the lifestyle that you want to live in africa so you don't take uh hit on your on your lifestyle and also so you can you can contribute could contribute while you're in africa hire employ people i mean you're gonna have to get resources and funds from somewhere like i like fitzgerald steven says either you have the money or you don't that's the end of the day you know we could dance around i hate capitalism we need to <laughs> fix capitalism we need to do this ism that ism we need to do this we need to do that either you have the money or you don't it don't matter which ism it is either you have the money are you don't? Yeah. So, so as far as uh, me, if, uh, yes, as you guys know, I'm I'm licensed health and I have my health and insurance. I mean, health and life, life and health uh, insurance license um, here in, in Georgia. So you know what we do um, as far as we offer financial literacy, financial programs. Uh, you know, help educate you on your finances, um, help you build a legacy uh, through wealth uh, and inheritance. Uh, you know, that's uh, that's what me and uh, Yishak do. So, uh, Brother Abraham, if you want to dive in a yeah. little bit. on Well, I'll tell you. So for me, the reason why I started venturing into finances is because first, I'm from a family of 13 children. And the one thing that I realized that we did not get um, educated on growing up was money. You know, it wasn't a topic that we talked about. But then when I went off to college, I, I started um, talking to other people who grew up in different backgrounds than I grew up in. And it seemed that their family 
was able to educate them more on finances than me. We were both in the same college. We were both attending the same classes. But, you know, my college uh, buddies that I was in college with, they were driving around in nice cars and different things of that nature. I went to UAB, University of Alabama, Birmingham, um, to college. I, I, didn't, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's where I went to college at at the very beginning. Um, I, I was born and raised in New York City. And my best friend, I, actually his father, was the one who paid for us to go to college. So, you know, we were in New York. We were graduating from high school. And he said, look, he said, I bought a I bought into a store. It was a leather and shoe repair place in Birmingham, Alabama. He said, I bought into this business and I'm not going to be there to run the business. He said, so what I'll do is you two guys go down and run my portion of the business and I'll pay for you guys to go to college. So I said, that's a win-win. I didn't even have to think about that one. So we went down to Birmingham and mind you, I had never been further than Virginia from New York. So me going to Birmingham, Alabama was a total culture shock. It was totally different. But what I realized when I got there, it was that everybody didn't grow up in the same background that I grew up in. Now, I tell you, that's one thing. I'm not the biggest proponent on people going to college because I know they're going to teach you how to be an employee. But what it did do for me was it gave me access to different people that I did not grow up around. So now I went from just having one mind frame to being around other people who thought totally different than what I thought. And that wasn't just Caucasian people. That was some other black people that I interacted with and they grew up in different backgrounds. So it just gave me the ability to be able to a um, realize how important it was to know how money works. Now, fast forward, after I worked for 20 some odd years after that, I come into to meeting someone from this company, World Financial Group and Trans American Financial Advisors. And they told me, hey, look, would you rather be able to make what you make in a year's time or if I could show you how to make your yearly income in a month, do you think you would have more security that way or if you waited a whole 365 days to make your money? And I said, well, that's a no brainer. If you can show me how to make what I make in a year, in a month, I got time to listen to that. And I've been on a journey for six years after that because now I have my children in business with me and I took them out of their jobs a month into coming into this company because I said to myself, I can't go back in time. But if I can show my children, my son was 18 at the time, my daughter was 21. I said, if I can show my children how to be able to benefit from this information, well, that's like me going back in time. I can be giving them the information. They can get information from multimillionaires. They can have mentors who are successful in business. And then it's going to teach them so much more than what they're going to learn in school. So this company has given me the ability to not only educate myself and my family, but now I get to educate other people on how to be able to have business mastery, how to be able to learn financial empowerment, and how to be able to just basically do that self-development and to help yourself become better. Because at the end of the day, if you can only do what you know. Absolutely. Let's see what we have in the uh, email. Let me see if anybody emailed want to hop on. And guys, hit that uh, hit that like button. Let's see here. Again, join the conversation, uh, everyone. And also, too, in the um, – if I need to put it in the chat room. Here we go. Elevated Black, I am about to send you the email, uh, link right now. Elevated Black, I am about to send you the link. Hold on one second. Let me grab it for you. Yeah, because, I, I, you know, uh, me, myself, uh, Yishak, there was a certain time when I was, you know, I was kind of moving in a direction of living off the land. But uh, I, I just realized at the end of the day, uh, I mean, in, in order, has, it, here we go, let me back up for a second, Yishak. You know, we complain about the Lebanese, we complain about the Chinese, you know, we complain about, you know, these people, yeah. that people. And then we get upset 
but what we want to offer is just to go live off the land, which I mean, that's what you want to do. That's fine. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. But I think right. brothers like me, brothers like you, brothers like Fabian, I mean, we, we, we have so much more to offer that, I mean. Well, you got to remember, Dennis, you have to buy the land first. So even if you want to live off the land, you have to buy the land. Then you have to plant the crops. And then you have to have someone to help you get the crops out of the ground. So they're good. you have to employ someone. So it's still going to take money. Whether you want to live off the land or you want to live in the city or you want to, it doesn't matter where you want to live. The most important thing you have to realize is everything costs, no matter where you are, it's still going to cost you money. So to try to run away from financial information, to try to run away from knowledge about how money works, this is the reason why the world progresses and our nationality doesn't particularly progress as much as other communities. Look, in other communities, they got Asian banks, right? They have banks in everyone's community that lend to them to be able to do things in their community, to be able to build homes, to be able to uh, you know open businesses, all of these other things. We don't have that same access because people don't think to themselves, okay, these things are important and this is what I want to be able to do and this is what's necessary. So it's so important that we, you know, be the the ushers of our own success. You know, we, we give ourselves the opportunity to be able to succeed by way of providing that for ourselves. Uh, go ahead, Elevator Black. Elevator Black, man, go ahead. Go ahead. Hello. Yeah. All right. Just uh, call back in uh, once you get your uh, sound together. Okay. All right. Go ahead, Yashar. Yeah, I like that. That's real nice. That, that was a, a nice attitude. <laughs> no, just to add people in so that they can. Um, yeah, yeah. So you know, they share. Yeah. You know, join the conversation. They have any questions they want to ask. If um, you know they want to contribute, by all means. Yeah, I like that. You know, because I, I don't like it when it seems as if we're just talking to people. I like the interaction because you know this is all a group effort. You know, we're all working together to be able to get to this next level, and everyone's contribution is important. Everyone's information, everyone's knowledge is something that can be shared because we can all benefit from it. Mm. And I think that's yeah. another thing. Everybody thinks their knowledge or their info is more important than... Oh, heck no. Yeah, I mean, you know, like we were talking to, um, we were talking to the the, the, the sister, uh, Felia, uh, this morning. And... Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And that was, you know, to me, that was so vitally important because she brought years of experience. So, you know, it just it from it was just a great thing to be able to share with her because I know she has so much wealth of information that she can give as well. So what it was uh the brother Fitzgerald uh Stephen Stevens has to say when it comes to wealth building, build royalties, residuals, and dividends to bridge the wealth gap and leave income streams to the next generation. Of course, of course, because at the end of the day. Here's the most important thing. You building wealth just for yourself does nothing for the generations that's going to come behind you. So here's the other thing that I learned from different people that I went to college with. Um, the wealth that those young men that were in school with me, what they were living off of was that generational wealth that was given on to them. You know, a lot of them had, uh, you know, had money that their grandparents put away from them for years and years and years. And then by the time they went to school, they were living off of that money, you know, and they didn't have to get a side job like I had to when I was in school in Alabama. How you doing, Elevated Black Man? I see you on now. How y'all doing, brothers? Oh, man. Fantastic. Fantastic. Cool, cool. All right. So I got a, I got a situation. I guess it will be somewhat unique, but it's, it's really not that unique. Uh, I was in the Army for nine years, so... I get a pension. I'm afforded my GI Bill and everything. And to be honest, I can live off that pension here in America. It's, it's no problem. Uh, I'm waiting on my wife to get out the Army right now. So my question is, how can I maximize, 
you know, that opportunity that I have when I do touch down in Africa and, you know, in a positive way and not be, you know, one of those people that's just there. Cause I could, I could just go there and just, you know, live good for the rest of my life and not, you know, you know but I, w- I want to be a part of the solution. So my question is, how would I be able to do that? Yeah. Oh, so what resources would you, you know, point me in, uh, what direction would you point me yeah, in? Yeah. So, so your situation isn't as unique as you think. There's uh-huh. a lot of other people that, you know, spent time in the military and, you know, so here's the thing about the military. You can retire from the military at a young age. And mm-hmm. like you said, you can get a pension plan from the military. Mm-hmm. And But the problem that takes place, there's a lot of other um, people who come from the military that don't think like you think. Mm-hmm. So in their mind, they're like, shit, I got it made. <laughs> I got the pension plan. I'm not doing nothing else. I'm yeah. just chilling. You know, I'm yeah. going to go someplace where I could just live off of this money and I don't have to do anything. Mm-hmm. But what you don't realize is you're in such a great place because you can do two things. Mm-hmm. One, there's great investments that you can do with your money that can multiply the amount of money that you have. We were just mm-hmm. speaking to uh, one of the other ladies that's been on the uh, uh, podcast with Dinah from before today. Mm-hmm. And we were saying, there's ways that you could take that money and they have investment vehicles now that you can put that money into. A, you don't have to pay any taxes on the money that comes back off of that money. But the second thing is you don't have to claim that money as income. And the difference between that is the next year, you're going to have to pay more taxes on that money. So it takes away those two things. Also, you have access to that money in less time do it take you to build it inside of a traditional retirement fund. The most important thing, though, is that you're going to get multiple um, opportunities from that investment vehicle. What I'm talking about is life-based vehicles, and life-based vehicles allow you to have a, a death benefit, just in case something was to happen to you. Mm-hmm. Your beneficiaries be able to benefit, so to be from whatever came from that. Two, to give you opportunities of what's called long-term care riders, because nowadays they say 60% of the people who reach the age of 65 or older are going to have some type of long-term care uh, incident that's going to take place. What does that mean? I can't work for an extended period of time, or I might have to, like, let's say I used to work in a hospital in an operating room. Mm-hmm. We have people who broke their leg. That's a, that's a, uh, issue where they can't go back to work at that present moment. Mm -hmm. But I had people who told me, I'm going back to work because I don't have short-term and long-term disability. So I don't have any money to live off of if I don't work. So A, it allows you to have the death benefit. B, allows you to have the long-term care benefit. And then C, it allows you to have the ability to have cash value that can be built up inside of this policy that's going to grow tax-free that you can take tax-free distributions off of. But here's the most important thing. It has a floor. So if the stock market was to go below zero, like it's just did the last week when Mm -hmm. Trump said he wasn't going to negotiate anymore for any more stimulus money, you wouldn't lose any money because it has a floor to keep you from losing money. Yeah. So, but not knowing these things, people don't know that these investment vehicles are available. So they don't have the ability to be able to benefit from. But here's the science. Most of the providers that look like you and I, guess what neighborhood they're not coming to to inform our people about these things. They're not coming to sit down with us, right? And you know the people who don't look like us, they're not coming to our neighborhoods to tell us about these things. So at the end of the day, we are our own help. That's why I said we have a grassroots crusade to be able to educate our people about how money works, first of all, the principles of how money works. See, it's not white principles and black principles. No, it's green principles. This money principles. And it works for every nationality. It's not discriminatory. Money doesn't discriminate who it goes to. But if you don't have the knowledge on how to get it and how to grow it, then you're going to discriminate against it on yourself. Because people are saying, well, I don't want to, I don't want to do nothing that the white man is doing. Well, he's not doing anything that that is exclusive to Caucasians. Yeah. He's just doing something that he was taught. And then what did he do? He taught his children. And then they taught their friends. 
and so on and so on and so forth. And that's how this information grows. We have to be the people who say, now each one teach one. This is something that's always been in our community. We shared information with each other. We taught inf information to each other. And then in turn, we just started passing it on, each one to the, to the next one, each one to the next one. I talked to the uh, young lady that we were speaking with earlier. I, speak, I say young lady, she's an elder. But um, we were talking to her about, remember when there was a time when you got two whoopings. One, <laughs> if the next door neighbor saw you doing something, they gave you a whooping. And then when you got home, you got a whooping from your parents. Right? <laughs> because growing up, people were concerned. You know, people in the neighborhood was like, you know, you're not my child, but I see you doing, you know, the devilishment. Mm -hmm. so I have to, I have to step in because I know your parent might be at work. You know, they might be off doing something else and I'm here. So I gotta, I gotta help you. This yeah. is the same thing that we have to do with finances, man. We have to help each other understand how money works because if we don't teach each other, who's going to do it? Yeah. Right. You know? So what we want to do is we want to get you an opportunity because I like you, brother. We want to give you an opportunity to be able to, um, you know, benefit from sitting down with us. So, you know, we have a, a free financial needs analysis that we do. Okay. We'll give you a complimentary financial needs analysis. And it's going to give you an opportunity to really understand the principles of finances. But more importantly, we want to introduce you to this crusade, brother, to be able to help educate other people. Because, you know, at the end of the day, we got to do that each one teach one. Absolutely. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So just I say Donis has your information. So we're just going to make sure we communicate with you. And we're going to set up a time where we can sit down and we can go through a whole entire thing. Where we could show you from beginning to end how this thing really works. OK, I'm, I'm with it. I appreciate it. Yeah, definitely. So we appreciate you for getting on, too, brother. All right. No Thank you. Brother, you have any, any other questions? Uh, no, that was that was really it. It's something that's, you know, been weighing on me for a minute. So I just needed to get that off and. You know, I appreciate everything y'all doing. You know, I've been I've been following Dinus for a minute. Uh, you know, I just I appreciate everything y'all doing, brother, for real. Because hey, brother, now, now the the job is to the job now is to become the next level. You know, it's like when we benefit from information, the next thing we got to do now is we got to share that information. Absolutely. Yeah, because it, it's it's gonna do no good dying with us, brother. Nah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Hey, all right, now thanks for getting on. Right, appreciate you coming on, man. Yep, thank you. All right, let's uh, no see, so guys. Again, hit that like button. Hit the like button if you want to call in and ask a question. Uh, if you want to add to the conversation, email is uhuru at searchforuhuru.com. Again, the email is uhuru at searchforuhuru.com. Yeah. Okay. Please. That, that's so vitally important, Don. Is I, I'm, uh, that question was so good that the uh, young brother gave because, you know, it's so interesting that a lot of our uh, young people go into the military and they don't have a plan. They don't have a plan for after they leave out of the military. So they, they spend years in the military. You know, some of them, like he said, get the GI Bill or some of them get college paid for while they're in the military. And then they'll leave out of the military and you see a lot of these homeless vets that you know they have access to all of these different things but they they don't utilize them you know because right. a they might not know you know some people are not getting benefits because they don't even know they get those benefits nobody right. you know nobody gave them a, a, a sit down before they left to kind of tell them these are the things that you you know that you get when you're in the military the benefits that you have available to you. Some people don't even know those things. All right. And yes, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm studying for my real estate license as we speak, and I was learning about the uh, VA loan. And I'm like, yeah. Goodness, yeah, the VA loan is great. Yeah. But there's a lot of people who are vets who have never even put in for the VA loan. You know? So it's yeah. like they have access to these things, right. but because nobody shared with them, you know, they, they went in the military, got out of the military, and never even asked any questions. <laughs> yeah, because like I said, I was reading about the VA loan. It's like, well, a guy like that who has his pension, I mean, he pretty much would go pick out any house he wants to. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, like, like, you know, you know, <laughs> but, but a lot of people in his position are living, renting homes, not realizing 
that they can go get the VA loan and go get them a house, which is going to cost them less. And they get the opportunity to get equity inside of their home. And they have an asset rather than just having the liability. Right. And, you know, they actually get something that can build. That's an investment as well. Something that can build equity inside of it. But they think it to themselves, oh, you know, I'm renting. Well, I tell people, I give people the analogy of insurance. I said, insurance, there's different kinds of insurance. There's insurance like renting a home. You rent a home and you're giving money to someone else. And when you leave out of that home, and I say when your, um, your, uh, your term policy has lapsed and it's no longer in force, when you leave out of that home, you can't take any of that home with you, nor any of the benefits from the home either. So just like a term policy, it has a, a date that you leave out of the term policy and you no longer can get any of those benefits. And I tell people, here's a, here's a number that a lot of people are not familiar with. 90% of the people who get term policies never use the policy. Imagine if you get a 30-year term at 20 years old, you're 50 years old, and the term policy is no longer in force. You didn't you use the policy. Start you got to start. Yeah, you just paid 30 years mm -hmm. for a policy that didn't do anything for you. Well, there's other policies that you can get. You might pay a little bit more, but that policy is going to benefit you for the rest of your life. And then you can also get cash value inside that policy that you can utilize for other things. Right. You know? All right, let's see. Uh, couples Productions, I am sending the link to you right now. I am going to send the link to you. Oh, that's the wrong link. Hold on one second. And guys, also, too, for more information, uh, if you want to set up a consultation with me and your shop, my link is in the chat room. It's also scrolling to the bottom of the screen. It will also be in the description. Click on that link, uh, leave information, and I will definitely uh, reach back out to you guys. Again, it's all about you know as far as what like what the what the plan of action is you know again we're building a bridge between africa and the diaspora via art commerce and culture and that commerce portion i really want to really really want to focus on that you know me and fitzgerald come on here me and Yishak come on here uh me and another brother we're going to be coming on here soon um but uh mr da costa we're coming on here soon as well starting uh tomorrow actually uh, but I just think because somebody in the chat was bringing up and I hate using the word hotel because it has like a negative connotation now. But I just think, you know, me and Yishang were both heavily in a conscious community. Uh, and the part that's missing the most that we dance around and try to avoid is the whole finance part. You know, I just think that part isn't necessarily uh, really dived into and discussed. Well, so, you know. I can tell you the reason why a lot of people dance around that topic or try to avoid it, as you put, is because they they're not aware. Well, so, not even that. They're aware. They they not only that they demonize it until. A, well, I mean, the they're off. only they're only demonizing it because they're not aware. Because if they were aware, they would know it's no white man's money. There's no black man's money. There's just money, and what you do with it is in the in the guise of what's important to black people and what the white man does with it is what's important to him and Caucasians. That's it. It's nothing to demonize the white man for doing what he's doing for his community. That's what we should be doing for our own community as well. That's it. Uh, go ahead. You want to uh, read or you want? Yeah, yeah. Can one of you explain how to get affordable whole life insurance uh, because most options are out of the blue collars workers budget? Yeah, so I'll tell you <clears throat> First of all, I want to I want to address something because I had to explain this to um, to the sister that we were just talking to today, uh, Felia, which is there are so many different options other than whole life policy system. So here's the first thing: um, telephone technology has truly advanced from when I was younger. The first technology they had with cell phones. I'll, I'll look at cell phones. They used to have this big, gigantic brick phone that you would carry around inside of a case. It was so big that right. you had to put it in a case. That was the first cell phones. Only the rich could afford those big brick phones. The average person couldn't afford it. The only time I saw those brick phones in my community was the, the dope dealer. 
The drug dealer had the big brick phones as well. Then the phones went from being gigantic to being like a Tic Tac. So it got real small. Right, right, right. right, right. The right. Razors, you know, right. the phone. Right, right. You know, right. they took the technology and they condensed it down because of the advent of the microchip. So now the cell phones are these. Yeah. The, those Wait, are the cell phones. I got, I, got, I got a two screen cell phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's all, yeah, mine's two. This is a case. So yeah. it's all the, they're, they're back bigger again. But the technology, I'll tell you nine out of 10 times, most of the things I do on my cell phone. I don't even take my computer out. I just use my cell phone to do it. Why do I say that? Because technology advances things. So whole life is like driving a Studebaker car. Whole life is the is so old. <laughs> you know, whole life is older than me, right? So when we talk about insurance, I can always see where someone is coming from by way of the type of insurance that they talk about. So when people talk about whole life policies, my grandmother had a whole life policy on all of us when we were young. They're called Gerber policies. Matter of fact, Gerber still has insurance that they do nowadays. They still have Gerber whole life policies. I want to explain to you a little different about whole life and, and mm. index universal life policy. How you doing, brother? And at the beginning, the whole life policies, what they did oh, no. was they took all of their people that was inside of the company, let's say a company like Gerber, they take all of the people who have a policy with Gerber and they conglomerate all of their money together. So it's no separate uh, uh, buckets of money. Everybody's money's together. And they get everybody a small percentage every year, like 1% every single year. That's why whole life policies do not garnish a lot of cash value real fast. Now, updated insurance policies. They have things that's called index universal life policies that in turn take your premiums and outside of your cost of insurance, whatever money that you have outside of that, they put it into a second bucket. Then you decide what kind of strategy you want to utilize to be able to make that money grow. It has a floor and a cap off. So let's say the stock market goes up 30%. You got a cap of maybe 15, 11%. And they have a floor at zero. So you get whatever's in the middle of that and that strategy. That's the difference between index universal life and whole life policy. That's why my clients this year, even in a downturn market in December, they got 16% back on some of the strategies that they had them in. Some of them got 16% in, in January, February as well, and different variables within that. But even in a downturn market, because of the different indexes, the S&P 500, Hang Seng from China, Euro 50 stocks, because I can put their money in all of these different strategies inside of this insurance policy, A, is going to take on the same benefits of an insurance policy, which is there's an IRS code uh, that says that any money from an IRS policy, you do not have to pay in, any taxes on that money. So now their financial strategies that's growing inside of these policies get the same benefit. They get the same umbrella as that IRS code for beneficiaries, death benefit. So now you can benefit so much more with different policies. And now, depending on how old you are, it's going to depend on your cost of insurance, female, male, smoker, non-smoker, all of those things. It makes it much more cost effective. So the cost of things from before is not the way that things cost nowadays, and the benefits of before are not the same as they are nowadays. So you can benefit so much more from um, these new index universal life policies than you could from a whole life policy any day. Okay, let me, uh, hold on, let me unmute it. All right, go ahead, Kofi. Hey, sorry about that, man. My phone's acting a little jinky. Um, just want to no kind of explain the story. Um, I'm definitely coming from a place of illusion uh, my mother and my, my father, they gave me the name Kofi, you know, that I, I kind of ran with that. Uh, did I get teased in, in, in school? Like, no, because people just knew not to, to mess with me. <laughs> um, but I was one of those, you know, Africans in America with, 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 with an African name. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, fast forward, um, you know, I, I would, I would run into a lot of um, people coming into the city from, say, like Howard, um, from um, down south. A lot of um, continental Africans, and I, I would, I would date some of the women. Sorry, sorry for the noise. This is Brooklyn right now. Oh yeah. yeah. As soon as it passes, it, it should be good. All right. So um, that's when I that's when I wanted to to just instantly be on the continent, especially like the women I did. I wanted to chase them, you know. Uh-huh. Uh huh. I started to learn so much. I I actually started to become a, a better American. I feel. I studied the stock market. I was listening to um Jay Morrison. To start mm-hmm. the Tulsa Fund. Yeah. Um. I I currently have my real estate license here in New York City, but I, I also feel like I'm being phased out here. Mm-hmm. So why 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 uh, Kofi? Why do you say that? Why do you feel like you're being phased out? I feel like I'm being phased out because you know I didn't I didn't learn how to code in um, junior high school and in high school, and these are the these are the jobs that you need to have in in order to um the six figure jobs in order to even roommate. You know, I, I've learned that because I've I've processed a lot of um, people into these apartments, and either their parents make six figures or or uh, they make six figures, and and and, yeah. and they're and, and they're roommating. Not not everyone have their own apartment. Right. Um. I, I feel like I'm being phased out because a lot of us native New Yorkers, you know, we 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 tend to come from like a like a we tend to have a, a very um a. a a family background, meaning our our families are, are here. You know, this is who we're going to. Um, if, if anything, for lack of better words, these, these are our roommates, uh, our, our other siblings, our, our family members, and that's that has definitely frowned upon, opposed to other cultures where you know the family is in one house. And uh, I, I just feel like I'm not being treated too good uh, here. I, I'm I'm seen as a criminal. You know, when I'm getting the keys to these apartments, um, people can't believe that I even have my real estate license. And um, I feel like there's just like, there's just, the infrastructure is so built up here. There's lack of opportunities. There's lack of creativity because it's too much regulation. I, I believe that I can say, go to a place like Ghana. I can go to a place like Zimbabwe and I could, you know, I, I could possibly get into their um, cannabis uh, industrial hemp industry that they, they they legalized the past few years. I believe I could grow new industries over there. Um, take the guy Morris Ibetsa. Um, he started this company called IoT Numeral. He's he flew up in the um, a passenger drone that he created himself, self-taught. Mm-hmm. Uh, I look at Africa in a in a very good light. You know, whenever I, I talk to a continental Af- African, they're like, man, why you want to go there for why, why can't you just do it here? And um, my description of, of Africa is, is, is coming from a place of illusion, meaning I only know the, the, the good things about Ghana. So I'm, I'm the type of person to go, I'm the type of person to go purchase land and haven't been there. You know, that's what I've, that's what I've done. No, I, I, I haven't been to Africa at all. I believe, I believe I'm going next week. My my tickets are for Sunday. I, I got my visa. The pops mm-hmm. visa is on its way. You know that may change our um, reservation, our, our itinerary. But I'm I'm gonna be there uh, for the month of, of, of November. Uh, we're gonna stay in Accra for a week at, at this guest house. And then we're gonna head over to um, Central Coast. We're gonna get our plot, and um, with the register with the papers that we registered with. We're gonna use that to um, get a residency visa, and then um, maybe I could stay there longer, and uh, I could I could most likely uh, register a business. You know, I have a I have a couple of business ideas from the, the land that we own right now. Uh, now now tell me, is that if, am I am I am I being am I coming at it from from an illusion? Should I be going? Should, should I be going there based off uh, an illusion or based off reality? But the only reality I know is yeah, based from so, the Liberians, from the African Americans who started Liberia. And I know how hard that was. That's that's yeah, the only so, reality I can go off of. 
So, so I think you, I think you're misunderstanding what I was saying. So okay. I'm not saying that we shouldn't go to Africa, yeah. and I'm not saying that going to Africa, you know, you need years and years and years of planning. But I think what Dinas was saying is the most important thing. So it doesn't matter what business venture that you're going to get into, you're going to need startup capital. Mm. And what I'm saying is the easiest way for you to be able to be successful in things is A, I, I heard a, a few times within the conversation that you were saying was, I'm going to try, maybe I'm going to. So the easiest way to get to success is to take all of those possibilities out of your conversation and put it in a bunch of positive or definites. Of this is what's going to happen. I've already done the research on this. This is how much money I need to do this. So that if you're going to go over to Africa, you want to go to Africa being an asset and not a liability. Right. Mm -hmm. go over to asset to be able to bring something because you're not just going to Africa just to live for yourself. Mm. You're going to be able to bring things for others. So mm. like I, when I went over to Africa, I worked in the medical field and mm. we had the um, uh, urinary catheters that you used to have all the time. Well, in these kits of the universe and the, and the um, urinary catheters they used to have, they had this little bottle that had, uh, um, they used to put cotton balls inside. Right? So this little bottle, we threw this bottle away every single time we opened up one of those catheters and we used thousands of them. So what I did when I went over to Africa and I went to the clinics, before I even started bringing anything with me, I started trying to figure out what it is that they needed. So when they gave their medication, you know what they did? They put the medication in a piece of paper and they wrapped it in the piece of paper and they gave it to people. So what, what I did after that was I said, you know what? That wrap in paper is a necessity. So I looked at that little bottle that we had in the ureter catheter and then I started collecting the thousands of those catheter bottles and I brought those bottles over with me and I gave them boxes of it. The first year I came, I had like five boxes of these little, I call them pill bottles. This looked like the same size as you would put medication inside of. I bought thousands of them with me because I became an asset and not a liability. When I came over, I came over as an asset because I realized there was a need and I became a person who was fulfilling that need for the clinics and the places that people went to. And this is the same thing that you need to do. If you're going to go over to Africa and you're going over to Ghana, you have land and different things of that nature, you want to be able to be an asset. So you want to bring things with you. I'll tell you this, brother. If you can't make it here in the United States financially, you're not going to take yourself over to Africa and become more successful in Africa unless you bring the same principles that were successful here in the United States. Now, yes, sir, there's an argument that people will disagree with you. What would you have to say to them? Oh, man, I, they can disagree all they want to. But the reality is, here's the question. Just show me people who have gone over to Africa and have not utilized the same principles that were successful here in the United States. That's the only question I ask you. Show it to me. There's nothing for us to be able to argue with. Only question I have to ask is, do they not have stores in Africa? Yes, they do. It's the same principle that works here in the United States. Uh, uh, Akon went over to Africa and used solar power. Their solar power is successful here in the United States. They're not doing anything different in Africa than they're doing here in the United States. It's something that's being utilized here in the United States. So the question is only this. Do you have the knowledge that you need to be able, just like Akon went over and did solar panels in Africa? Do you know anything about solar panels? Do you know what it costs to be able to put together a solar panel? Do you know how to be able to purify water? Do you know what it would cost for a water purification system? All of these different things that's necessary over in Africa that what? We're bringing an opportunity to solve a problem. That's what makes money anywhere when you're able to bring a solution to a problem. Well, the two biggest solutions in Africa, because I know I've been there, is rolling blackouts. They have rolling blackouts because of the power grid. 
and water filtration. Those are the two biggest problems in all of the continent of Africa. So the question is, do you have a solution for those two problems? Those are big problems. And those are solutions that if, if you had a solution for it, like Akon went over to Africa, had a solution for it, now they gave him his own city. I'm just saying, are we going to be an asset or are we going to be a liability? Your sound is off. Uh, yeah, I know. Right. Beautiful. Background noise. Go ahead, Kofi. Other than the, the Sierra Leoneans from Nova Scotia and other than the Liberians that went over in the, in the say, late 1700s, in the early 1800s, um, I would like to be the first one to, um, you know, plant myself on a continent without a, a, a edu without a Western degree, with, without a Western corporate job. You know, I would, well, I'm not I would like to say. Free, but yeah, that, don't, don't get it. Don't get missed. Don't get it twisted. Okay. I'm not talking about a degree. But you still have to have the knowledge. You don't need a degree, yes. but yes. you need the knowledge. Whether you yes. have a degree or not, that's don't nobody care about a degree when you go over there. The most important thing they're gonna care about is do you know how to do it? Mm. You know, do you know how to do it? So here, can I give you some information? Yes. The reason why we face so much adversity in the two places that our people went over to be able to create land masses and societies is because we came over without the philosophy that A, you need structure, mm -hmm. and you look at those two places today, and there's a lot of disorganization. The reason why is this disorganization is because people don't have an alternative. Mm. So if you say, I don't like capitalism, then what's your alternative? Mm. People are saying, I don't like the, you know, the two political system party, what's yeah. your alternative? Um, you know? Co-ops. They say co-ops. Uh, I mean, I, I agree with the co-ops too, but then I, I believe that the co-ops, meaning the co cooperatives, they oh, would yeah. they would give you that foundation to then jump into capitalism, like on um, China. China, yeah, uh, they're they're communists and they just so they just dominated cap capitalism. That's right. Um, look, but man. Let me ask you a I, question, brother. Do you okay. know why? Do you know why the Chinese are dominating uh, capitalism? Because I believe, unlike here in the United okay. States, there's not those 15, 20 different tiers of people that they have to go through an approval for. So because they have a communist base, which is the people that's in I the money, <laughs> they decide all of the stuff. Uh, you coming people. back? And because of that, that's the way that they get success. Because in a communist uh, a political party, I don't have to ask your permission. Mm. So I decide for us mm. because I decide what's the best for the whole. Mm. When you do a co-op, here's the downside of a co-op. Okay. People who have no understanding about what we're going to be doing get to have a say. Mm. So it's great yes. that everybody gets to, to put their, you know, weigh in their opinion. Yeah. But sometimes it's just that. Sometimes it's just an opinion. It doesn't have any basis on reality. It doesn't have any basis on knowledge or how could we get from this point to that point. I believe that every society should have input where it's relevant. Mm. So we're talking about electric, electric grid work. If we don't know shit about electric grid work, we shouldn't have a say. Yeah, yeah. Because what difference would it make what I think, you know? It's just not very important. So I think everything is relative. You know, it's all relative. So you wanted to be able to go over to Africa. I think it's commendable. But at the end of the day, it makes me a better. To me, it makes me a better American just thinking about Africa, dreaming about Africa. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, of course it does. But at the end of the day, you have to be bringing value. That's true. That's the and thing. Only yeah. value I have is the value that everyone else has access to, which is the internet. I you mean, know, but, and, uh, but at the end of the day, remember I said, now the internet yeah. is just one big place of information, and yeah. most people are jack of all trades and masters of none. The internet, you can get a PhD on the internet nowadays with information. But yeah. most people, they can't focus themselves long enough because each day they're on there studying a different kind of information. Yeah. So, you know, at the end of the day, brother, look, 
here's the most important thing, having a game plan. Because if you don't have a game plan, how much success can you get without a game plan? Well, um, I would I would just like to conclude it at that. Um, your name is uh, Yitzhak? Yitzhak, Abram. Uh -huh. Yitzhak, I'm, I'm Kofi Newton. Um, Dinus, thank you very much for having me on. Please, no uh, guys, follow me on Couples Productions. Um, I'm going to be filming my ventures in Ghana. I should be there for, for one month. I'm going to try to extend it to three months, and uh, let's, let's see what happens. And, uh, thanks a lot for your advice, and I would I would take heed to it. All right, for sure. Definitely. Right. Thank you. All right, bro. All right, bro. Peace. Peace. All right. Yeah. yeah. That's one thing I realized, Dan, is, you know, it's, it's commendable that a lot of younger people want to become more proactive um, with Africa. But the thing that I, that I think that's so uh, pivotal is, you know, like I asked them, what can you bring? You know, like what, what are you bringing at the end of the day? Like if we don't have if we don't have finances, if we don't have information, if we don't have look, they have access to the internet in Africa too. You know, so if only thing that we're bringing is access to information from the internet, well, shit, everybody can get on the internet. You know, but how successful has that been with everybody being on the internet? How successful has it been? with people just getting information off the internet and not having a focal point, not having the ability to be able to execute that information that you, that you learn. Hey guys, in, in the chat room, also let me get the banner scrolling again at the bottom of the screen. So in the chat room is a link and also at the bottom of the screen uh, in, in, in the banner, and also be in the description will be a, a link to my website. Go to the website, fill out the information. Uh, we'll love for you guys to be a part of this mission uh, this financial crusade, yeah, uh, you know, as as Brother Abraham so eloquently uh, eloquently uh, stated, uh, you know, where we're offering uh, self help, uh, self development, financial literacy, you know, and and we're gonna we're gonna spread this word so we yes. can make an impact. Yes. We're, so yeah, God, at yeah. the end of the day, people want to be able to do something. You know, they want to be a part. They want to feel like they're a part of something. They want to feel like they're a part of something that's going to really, truly help people. And I can tell you, you know, our company has had over 50 percent advancement from since before the coronavirus. And these last eight months, we've grown in a 50 percent increment. And that's only because we do so well in, in bad times, like in the time right now of uncertainty, when people are looking for some kind of certainty to their lives. You know we're doing we're doing such great numbers because we're giving people that ability to make a true difference in other people's lives. Hey, uh, real real quick, Yashaka, this is kind of off topic. Now, our company did it cover the fees for your series, or did it help no. out? No, okay. no, nope. not at all. But what about your insurance? Okay. License, your license, your permanent license. I paid for all of that myself. Okay, just like because I paid for it myself and. I could take it with me if I leave. Some of the other companies, they, they might right. tell you, yeah, yeah. yeah we'll pay for yeah, your you're license. Captive. You're captive though, that's right. That's, that's right. right, yeah, so your license stays there in house. Yeah, I'm not trying to leave my license anywhere. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I'm an independent agent. I can use my license any way I see, any shape, form, or fashion. I can go over to Africa and work with a company over in Africa if I feel like it, you know, because I have the credentials to be able to do it. Right. All right, so guys, like, share, subscribe again. Uh, if you're interested in uh, working with us, uh, as far as you know, I guess spreading and sharing financial literacy and self help, yeah, getting that word out, right? Helping us getting the word out. Uh, link is in the chat room. Click on the link, leave your information, uh, and we will get back to you. Also, scrolling at the bottom of the screen will be in the description. Uh, anything you'd like to share in closing, uh, Brother Abraham? Yeah, you know, at the end of the day, you know, like I was saying, telling the young brother Kofi, it's so vitally important to have a game plan. You know, uh, going at things with the best of intentions sound good when you're creating that plan. But guess what? You have to create a plan. Like, you can't just go at it with the best of intentions and saying, I'm hoping that this is going to happen. And I think this is going to happen. And, I, you know, maybe this might happen. Assumptions don't get you anything but confusion. The only thing that gets you solutions is having a game plan, 
having definite, I got step one, step two, step three, step four. I know exactly what I need to do. And I've looked at the downside of things because see people want in their mind to think to themselves, everything is going to happen positively. I'm going to go over to Africa and everything is going to go exactly the way it's supposed to be. There's not going to be anything that's going to happen. That's going to, you know, throw a monkey wrench in my game plan. That's not the reality. You know, you might go and lose all your money. You, you know, you might go, you've invested in this land. What if you invested all this money in this land? You go over there and there's no land. You know, like you, like he said, he bought all of the stuff before he went out there. He had never been out there. He never met anybody out there. He just went out there, and, you know, spent his money. And what if he goes out there and there was nobody? There was no land. There was no nothing. You didn't purchase anything. You know, so you got to have in the back of your mind, what if, like, what am I going to do if this happens? What am I going to do if that happens? A game plan, plan B, like what's going to happen if everything goes to hell in a handbasket, what am I going to do? And right. that's what we specialize in, making sure that you have a game plan. Uh, yes, sir. So we have a question in the chat room uh, mm -hmm. or, or statement. That insurance sounds good, but if it is very tricky. You could choose to invest directly into the S&P 500 without having it tied into some life insurance and ah. the rate of return will be way better. Yeah, yeah, you could do that. But that same upside of the S&P 500. So let's use that. I'm, I'm glad I'm glad that person uh, spoke about that. So the average return of the S&P 500. So here's the how, you know, this is what I mean by vetting. So that, you know, I know what I'm talking about. The average return from the stock market in the S&P 500, not in the whole entire stock market, but in S&P 500 has been five, have been 4.9%. The average return that my clients has gotten back has been 6.49%. And that's in just one of the companies that I can show them where to put their money for. Here's why I've been able to get my clients more money than if they would have went directly to the S&P 500. And I, I like the fact that you mentioned that. S&P 500 doesn't have downside protection. So in years like 2008 and years like, you know, in the downturns of the stock market, when the market goes down, you lose more money than you've gained. So the S&P in 2008 was down uh, minus 34%. Guess what? If you had your money in the S&P 500, you'd have lost all of your money. That wouldn't have happened if it was tied into a life insurance policy. See, the whole thing about knowledge of investments is understanding profit and loss, not just by understanding profit. See, what you're talking about is what you can gain from putting your money directly into the stock market. But you're not looking at how much money you can lose by doing that same exact thing. And let's talk about loss, because let's say I have $100 and I lose $50. I would have to get back 100% growth on my money after the loss to be able to get my money back up to where it was before I lost money. Stock market isn't going to do that right after either. So you're not going to get 100% growth right back afterwards. And a lot of times, guess what people do? When the stock market goes down, they sell their stocks, which in turn makes you realize the loss. So, you know, I mean, there's a lot of different realities of investments. I'm not saying you should put all your money into life-based products. What I'm saying is you should have a diverse portfolio so that you can have your money in different places and you can gain in different areas and then protect yourself from the loss that you're going to incur guaranteed in different direct um, financial buckets. All right. So there's a uh, some pushback. They're saying it's six to seven percent index. And in uh, first. Yeah, but you're talking about a you're talking about an index. You see, the index is a, a full market scope and that doesn't have to do just with the S&P 500. That has to do with indices. That's where the index comes from. So in the indices are stuff like the S&P 500, Hang Seng from China, the Euro 50, all of these different indices. And inside of these life-based products, I'm glad you asked that because guess exactly what you can do. You can benefit from the two highest earning indices. That's why they call it global index accounts. You can benefit from the two highest performing indices and they'll drop the lowest performing indice which is why I have clients that's gotten back over 16% on their money this year because they had global indexes and not just all their money in U.S. companies.
So there's a lot of growth in the okay. market. Go ahead. All right, somebody in the chat room said, no, no. So we'll, we'll tell you, got, you got you got time for another caller, Yashak? Or? Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Okay. All right, so guys, if you want to call in, again, if you want to call in, all right, you're more than welcome to call in Uhuru at searchforuhuru.com, Uhuru at searchforuhuru.com. You're more than welcome to call in uh, Uhuru at searchforuhuru.com. Again, Uhuru at searchforuhuru.com. You're more than welcome to call in. So, and a shout out to uh, Matilda. Real estate is really real estate is great. So again, if you want to call in, or Uhuru at searchforuhuru dot com. All right, Inspire Mo, you're absolutely welcome to call in. You can call in. Uhuru yeah. at searchforuhuru dot com. Go ahead and call in. So what we'll do, we'll wait a couple of minutes for people to call in. If not, we'll go ahead and start closing out. Again, the link is in the uh, chat room. Click on that link uh, and we will reach back out to you. Okay, click on the link and yeah. we will uh, definitely reach back out to you. Yeah, at the end of the day, there's so many different ways for people to make money. The, the point of today's conversation is not just to, because I have securities licenses where I can help people with investing directly into the stock market. But here's the difference with that. I wouldn't recommend a person who's 65 years old to be investing their money directly into the stock market. That wouldn't make sense for that person. They don't have the same horizon timeline to be able to benefit from the growth in the market and to be able to bounce back if the market dropped, you know, right before they were about to retire. So, you know, there's different strategies that are prevalent for different people. Everybody, it's not a one size fit all, you know, bucket where you just throw everybody into the same bucket. You have to, that's why we do a financial needs analysis. And that's why we look at each individual's person's um, needs, what they, their loss, you know, um, tolerance is. If it's different than another person, then we're going to give them a different kind of strategy. But we're not going to we're not going to just tell a person this is the best thing for everyone, because everyone's you know tolerance level is different. Everyone's ability to withstand loss is different. You know, everyone's um, growth time horizon is different as well. No, hold on, uh, Summer Journey. I just sent you the link. Summer Journey. I just sent you the link. Go ahead and call in. Hey, guys, make sure you hit that like button again. Please hit that like button. Also, go to uh, DynastyMirror.com. Go to DynastyMirror.com. Make sure you guys grab your copy, Sales Motivation 101, get off your button, cold call. Again, go to DynastyMirror.com and grab that. And then also tour Sierra Leone, uh, April 21st to the 30th. Come and join us. We are going to have an awesome time. April 21st to the 30th, we are going to have an awesome time. Please join us in Sierra Leone, everybody. Yeah, I don't know if they've uh, seen your videos and stuff that you've uh... – that you've done on the search for a who, but yeah, it looks like you're having a great time every time you go. So <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So come, uh, come and join us. So uh, summer sunshine. Enjoy I just, uh, summer sunshine, sunshine, or summer's journey. Uh, I just sent you the link, so we're just waiting for you to click on that link and hop on. Oh, here we go. All right, Summer, go ahead. Summer. Summer. Yes. Can you go hear ahead. me? We hear you. Go ahead. Hear you now. So, you know, I was listening to the financial advice that was provided. And I'll just say that I'm someone that took the time 10 years ago to start looking into how to really invest and, and look into how people really make money. In this country, I was very fortunate in that um, I have a, a really a niche, if you will, a career. So I don't have uh, unstable employment. Plus, I do like side hustles, things of that nature. Uh -huh. And so I'm saying this to say that I would never have um, the net worth that I have now 
if 10 years ago I did not consistently, they call it dollar cost averaging, just consistently invest in the market. The best years to actually invest in the market, believe it or not, are when the, the and no, by no, the no. way, I don't, I don't invest in, uh, to be honest, individual stocks. I just, I don't have the risk tolerance. I'm not interested in monitoring every single day, the stock market to see the ups and downs. What I invest in are broad-based index funds. Now there's a man by the name of Jack Bogle who mm -hmm. came yeah. up with something that was very novel. Mm -hmm. um, and he created the first index funds. So instead of trying to beat the market, what he said was, how about just match the market? Mm -hmm. So the most common index funds are the S&P 500 index, as well as the total stock market index funds. Mm -hmm. yep. There's also REITs, things of that nature, yep. uh, if people want to invest in. For many Black people, what I notice is that, you know, because, and I'm not trying to put this on everyone in the chat room, but I, I'll just speak about myself. If you were not necessarily educated in um, investments and and how people really make money in this country, then you kind of shy away from that unless you're exposed to it and you take the time to do the research. I think for a lot of people, what happens is they actually think they can just save their money, put it in a, um, I don't know, just a, a regular savings account or something yeah. to that effect. And, yeah. and that's not the case. So I just want to make it really, really clear to people. When they talk about net worth for black people, I read something that said um, the average black American has a net worth, I think, of less than $3,000, which is very, very sad. When you look at um, the debt, the assets, you know, minus the debt, there are no assets, really. There's no real estate. There's no uh, stocks. There's none of that. And so for your young listeners that have time on their side, time is your friend. Because one thing that you're going to see, you're going to see bull and you're going to see bear markets. It's going to be up and down, up and down, up and down. But if you're invested in a broad-based index fund, and this is, um, for those that are not familiar again with this, look up uh, John Bogle, look up index funds, do the research for yourself. Consistently invest, even if you only have $200, open up a Vanguard fund or even a Fidelity. So it's the top would be Vanguard, Fidelity, or Schwab open up a account immediately, even if you just have $50, get in the habit of every month investing in an index fund. My recommendation would be Vanguard just because the investors are the ones that make decisions. Not, um, it's not owned by a family. It's owned by the actual investor, which is you. Look at the ratio. So I don't use a financial advisor because I prefer to have keep the bulk of my money. Um, Vanguard only has a 4% fee. You'll notice that other index funds can be much more pricier depending on who, or it can be zero. Fidelity currently has, uh, it's, it's like an automated kind of like a bot, I think a zero uh, index fund. I, I'm not, I don't really like that. I just like the regular index funds with Vanguard just because they tend to have really stable returns. So I hope I haven't, you know, I hope I haven't confused anyone, but the information that I heard was that, you know, it's risky, it's it's all of this other stuff uh, by the person that was speaking. And that's just, it's not really risky in the sense, well, anything that you do in terms of investing, there's going to be a risk, but you spread your risk across the board when you're invested in 500 companies, because if one or two or three or four companies fail, then you're not really going to experience the loss that you would experience if you were only invested in one company. And you don't have to monitor what happens with the stock market when you're invested in broad-based index funds like the total stock market or the S&P 500 index fund. So, you know, I just think when I when I listen to these conversations and I hear about people specifically African Americans, Black Americans moving to Africa, um, my only issue is that I say to myself, if they're young, they're missing out on investing because I, I don't think that they're doing that from Africa. They could, of course, still do that, but 
if they don't have the the income coming in, how would they be able to do that? So they're moving to Africa without actually having um, financial independence. My strong advice would be, so there's a whole financial independence retire early community better known as FIRE. And what happens is you assess what your monthly um, spending is, you times that you know, by 12, and then you times that by um, 26. And that gives you your fire number. Some people's fire numbers are going to be higher, some will be lower. If you have a fire number of like, let's say 1.2 million, what that essentially means is you have a time horizon maybe of, depending on how much you're able to invest, maybe 14 years. That may seem like an eternity, but guess what? If you're able to reach that fire number within 12 to 13 years, consistently investing, doing your side hustles, having real estate, flipping real estate, doing whatever you can to achieve that, it essentially means you can draw down no more than 4% for the rest of your life. And for the, if the market performs like it has historically, you will always have um, that monthly amount that you initially calculated. And of course, people just don't stop working um, when they take that that journey of fire, they achieve their fire number and they are still doing, you know, whatever it is that they're passionate about. It could be, I guess, social media, you could write a book, whatever, but you're not you're not confined to working um, a nine to five or or really hustling because you would have a nest egg. So that was my only um, point. OK, hold on one second. I want to get uh, Yisha back on. We at Lawson. Let me call him real quick. Give me a second. He, uh... Oh, he's he's restoring it now. His computer had died. Yeah, the charger. You gotta you gotta charge your computer. But everyone, hit that like button as you come to the chat room again, please. Uh, please hit that like button as you come into the chat room. Uh, like, share, subscribe, and also make sure you go to uh, dynaspirit.com and grab your copy of Get Off Your Butt and Cold Call. You know, I'm trying to watch my language so we don't get censored. But Get Off Your Butt and Cold Call, and then also um, Sierra Leone, April 21st to the 30th. Sierra Leone, April 21st through the 30th. Come and join us again, April 21st through the 30th. Uh, Sierra Leone, come and join us. We're going to have an awesome time, guys. Have a lot scheduled. Uh, you know, we have a great itinerary. The, itiner the itinerary can be found at uh, go to searchforhoover.com to, to check out the itinerary. You can go to searchforhoover.com and the itinerary is listed and you guys can definitely check that out and then join us in Sierra Leone. And for those who want to, uh, who are interested in more information, uh, link is in the chat room in regards to me and the Shanks discussion. Uh, link is in the chat room. Again, link is in the chat room. Hold on one second. Let me go ahead and post that in there. Uh, that's the StreamYard link. I want to post that in there. Uh, link is in the chat room hold on one second let me go ahead and get that link real quick get the banner going so where are you located so i'm actually in the uh, dc metro area i live in um northern virginia okay but i'm initially from new york so you may hear like a new york accent yeah you start from new york as well here we go he's back on now let me get him in here. There we go. Yes, shot. Yes, shot. Got is that that is that Metro PCS? Yes, shot. You need to just call in on your phone. One second. One second.
Yes, shot. Guys, sorry about the technical difficulties. Yes, shot. Hello. This guy. Let's see here. Uh, guys, bear with us another uh, minute or so. So I definitely have to get Yishak on here so you have the opportunity to respond. Like I said, I definitely want to get him back on so he can have the opportunity to respond. It's just his, his computer went dead. Sure. And there are just, you know, um, so many resources online. There's a, actually a Black American family that achieved FIRE. Uh, they're from the Bay Area. They relocated out of the country. Um, they have around like 2.5 million, I believe, they were able to um, save through investments. And so they have a really great YouTube channel that it's very popular. Uh, they were on Good Morning America, Bloomberg, Business Report. They they do a lot of work around the financial management, um, financial investing area. And I think it's great because, like I said, they're Black. And um, a lot of times as Black Americans, we don't necessarily see ourselves in those spaces. Um, just because, again, maybe our families didn't necessarily educate us on this. So we shy away from that. And it can be detrimental, basically. Where, where, where did they relocate to in uh, Europe? So they they moved to Portugal. Okay, they, I think is it the is it the wife Caucasian? No, no. So she is. Uh, I believe she she's probably a mix of some sort. She's a light skin, uh, but she definitely. I think her her father is uh, black, um, but she's no. She's definitely not white. So okay. Aman and Christina. That's their channel. Um, our Rich Journey, very, very popular on YouTube. And uh, there are so many great resources of people that are just really educating the masses. And it's, it's a simple formula, to be honest. It all starts with a basic budget, understanding what you bring in and monitoring your expenses. The more you're able to save, in terms of what you make, the better off you will be. And not just saving, but investing. and you know, 10 years ago, I was making really, really good money as I am now. And I, I just kind of felt like the sky was the limit and I was doing whatever I wanted to do. I was never someone that had any issues paying my bills. I wasn't doing anything reckless, but at the same time, I could have, you know, I realized I could have saved so much more if I was just more structured with respect to understanding really on paper, how much I was spending and tracking my expenses and, and actually cutting expenses in areas that I, I never even knew that I was spending so much money in. And so I don't really live a frugal lifestyle, to be honest. I'm not like that, but I do set a strict budget for myself where after I pay my main expenses, I have um, a certain amount that I invest. I max out on my 401k each year. I max out um, with as best as I can with my uh, HSA as well. And um, I have a brokerage account that I contribute um, to on a regular basis. So with that, um, when I look at those reports of the uh, net worth of Black Americans, I have more of a net worth than what they quote for white Americans at this time. And I credit that with, with really not doing anything special, but just simply investing and also having an emergency fund. That's something else that I don't think people really speak about, having at least six to nine months of living expenses in a liquid account so that when you have those emergencies and they come up and they certainly do come up, 
you can pull from that account. You don't have to go into your investment account because the whole purpose is you want to capitalize on compounding interest. That's what the credit card companies charge you if you have an outstanding balance, but you can actually make that work to your favor by receiving compounded interest when you're investing in the market. And you don't have credit card debt, by the way, so you're not wasting money paying credit card companies. Did they ever, did, did they ever uh, speak on why they moved to Portugal and left uh, the, uh, well, I know the Bay Area is expensive as hell, but they ever uh, explain why they moved to Portugal, Portugal and how their experience in Portugal is, especially after Portugal was just built out by Angola. Did they ever... Yeah, so uh, they don't have really a political channel. I get the impression that they were very focused on um, ensuring that they maintained um, their lifestyle, if you will. Um, they calculated their fire number based on living in uh, San Francisco or Oakland. I, I believe that's where they are originally from. <clears throat> and so if they were to, as they calculated or said, if they were to pull down at least two to three percent, um, their money would go much further in Portugal in, in that area um, than it would in, in obviously like the Bay Area. Plus they have two young girls that they, you know, are saving for um, their college expenses and, and all of that stuff. Their daughters also have an investment channel, uh, but they don't get into the politics really, to be honest, of why. But I, I, I think um, they, they do kind of they have like a subtle way of just saying, you know, we have the ability to just kind of be free here. We we like the people. They have they just recently purchased property, and I believe they paid like two hundred and twenty eight thousand uh, dollars, maybe one night. What is it? One ninety five euro or whatever the conversion is. Um, and so they have a massive amount of land. They're growing their own farm. Uh, they're growing their own uh, food directly on their land. It's a beautiful, beautiful property. And so their their whole thing is really about being self-sustaining. Okay. Um, do, do they speak Portuguese? Uh, their daughters, I imagine, will at some point. But no, because they're, you know, directly from the States. They officially retired at 39 and 40. So that's, you know, the older you become, the harder it is sometimes to pick up a language if you haven't previously studied that language. Uh, the Portuguese, as they say, they, they speak English uh, for the most part. Most people speak English. So um, they're able to do everything that they need to do. Uh, somebody in the chat said the girl is Indian. Because she doesn't look mixed at all. Like she, I, I know you're talking about. She doesn't? She looks white to you? I, I'm, I'm trying to understand. Yeah, I mean, she looks like Indian. Like she doesn't look like... She, so. Like she doesn't. So, she looks like white, like almost like. No. So if you type in our rich journey, I don't know if you and you pull up Amon and Christina. I don't think you have the right people. If no, I, I know exactly what you're talking about it. Okay. Yeah, it's the uh, the guy. The guy's kind of like my complexion, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, I know. I know you're talking about. Okay, and they they have two daughters. Oh, she doesn't look yeah. Indian to me. I I've seen pictures that they've shared uh, with their family, and so based on the pictures that she shared her father is black and her mother looks like she could be like hispanic or a, a white latina or mixed race latina something to that effect i think hold on one second let me call you Yeah, I don't know what happened to him, but uh, what we'll do, guys, again, hit that like button. Um, what we'll do, we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and close out. I don't, I mean, I don't know what happened to you, Shock, but uh, you know, we'll be back on again, Miss Summer, and uh, you're more than welcome to uh, add to the uh, conversation uh, next time we come on. We'll probably come back on uh, Friday. Today's Wednesday. Uh, maybe, maybe Friday we'll we'll hop back on, and you're more than welcome to uh, to come on because I mean. 
Uh, I know he said his laptop went dead, but I don't know what's uh, going on now. And he's trying to. Uh, sure, I have a sure. I have a quick question for you. I'm sorry. Um, go ahead. So I know you do a lot of um, videos and content around um, Black Americans and visiting Africa and moving to Africa. And I was just curious: was the intention of this show? Because I I actually came in rather late. Um, was the intention to encourage Black Americans to first have a game plan, have uh, you know their finances in order, and know exactly what they're doing before relocating to Africa? Was that the intention generally? Right. So I mean, the intention of the show is you know me, brother for Cheryl Stevens comes on, and basically the the question is, you know, just people are always acquiring a how can I generate different means of income to sustain me in, in Africa. So uh, if there's something of value. I think there's an idea or a concept of value that can uh, facilitate that. I, I, I bring people on. OK, because I was just when I first heard that, I was saying to myself, well, we're here in America where, you know, all of the resources are here for us to take advantage of. Right. And I, I kind of it just seemed kind of foolhardy, like not you, but just the strategy that people who are currently immersed in a society that that prides itself on capitalism and investing are looking to make money. And they're asking how to make money in Africa, where I, I kind of just feel like, why not make your money here and live off of your investments and then start your businesses, do whatever you have to do. But at least you have your nest egg already. You're established. Worst, worst situation, if things don't work out or you need to leave, you have the means to do that. You can come back to the States if you need to. You can move to another country in Africa if you need to. You're not restricted. And uh, that's powerful to me. Like when you have achieved that financial independence, that it's not contingent upon um the job that you work, but your investments make money for you. That's the true definition of wealth. And I did not understand that until I started, you know, really understanding what investment is, like the meaning of it and how many people derive their wealth in this nation. Right. That's what we, that's what we explained at the beginning. That's what we Oh, okay. About. Yeah. Yeah. So. Our leveraging, um, I would say leveraging opportunities here, T basically taking your uh, your American income and flipping it in Africa. That's uh... right, because I've seen some disturbing videos of some people who will say on the video they had like thirty thousand dollars and they're just spending that money. And before they know it, that's that's very easy to go through if you don't have a strategy. You can't live off of thirty thousand dollars, you know. So I I just. I, I kind of shake my head sometimes and I say to myself, like, not to be a pessimistic, but why not create your wealth? You're in the lion's den here where people get wealthy by investing, by creating businesses, by having real estate that they flip. Why not do that here? And you have those resources to fall back on, regardless of whatever country you choose to you know, live in. Right. I think a lot of people, they want to completely cut ties with America. And see, that's uh, the that's the thing, Dinus. Like, I and I heard uh, the person that was previously here, and he gave some really good advice about that. That that's that's the quickest way to poverty. I feel like we have this mindset where money is evil, money is wrong. It can be evil, and it it can create a lot of issues in your life, but it can also be used for good. And so, the more resources you have, if you're someone that has a good intentions, you can take that money, and you could actually do a whole host of things. Uh, there's that guy, Wodi Maya, I believe, who right. showcased people who have done amazing things. And I said to myself, you know, I would, you know, at a certain point, love to reach out and, and uh, you know, give a donation or give, and not just like a thousand dollars, but a substantial amount to help them further what they have already built. So I, I just kind of see it as cutting ties with America. You can cut ties politically, and socially, but why cut financial ties with America? Because that's a lifeline. Right. So I think the the idea is, in, you know, for example, let me get your uh, thoughts on this. So, you know, I, I think as far as as far as black people, we've been we face a lot of adversity here in this country. 
Uh, and sometimes I would say, because you're saying, obviously, make your money here, but you have to pay taxes on that money, correct? The, the, the pin, depends on which vehicle or what you're doing. Here comes your shock now. Yeah, 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 you got to get that Metro PCS uh, cricket phone together, brother. This ain't, this ain't a phone, brother. So the reason why you couldn't get me on the computer is my computer died. I, I didn't have my uh, charger on it, and I actually was on another call. I saw you call. <laughs> okay. All right. And, then, uh, you know, let, in fact, let's do this, uh, Summer. Before you reply to me, I don't know what part you're shocked that you got disconnected on Summer. Yeah. Uh, so uh, the index uh, information that she was talking about, that was the last part. That I, I did have a response to her for the index information as well. <laughs> And the part that I was going to say was that's exactly the um, the understanding that I was going to start talking about. So the life based products that we um, recommend to our clients have that same industry built with inside of it. So it's giving the indexing rather than looking at just one particular industry. You get an index for the whole entire market, which allows you to be able to benefit from the full market scope. So you're going to always benefit from a higher uh, return and you don't have to just match the uh, market any longer. You don't have to just look to not beat the market because now you can beat the market. Because like I said, in, in December, I got clients 16 percent back on their accounts. And that's just because of the opportunity to benefit from multiple indices, not just one. Can I yeah. respond to that? So, uh -huh. so, you know, based on the market research, um, that was conducted over a 20 year period. Uh, no investor has ever for the long term beat the market. So the, the actual index of the S&P 500 long term. So what happens typically is you have really smart people, maybe over a one year or two year period, they're able to beat the market. But consistency is what most long term investors are really after. So when you start looking at consistently over a 15 year period, this has never been done by anyone. It doesn't matter. They that, have aerial so there, capital can't be. So sis, that, so, so sis, that's not the truth any longer. So it hasn't been done by anybody who's been in just strictly investments. But because we have a product that doesn't just give you the upside of the market, and you participate in the full side of the down, we give you the ability to get that middle ground and that's why I call it a hedge. So you're not just, you're not just participating in the upsides of the market, you're also taking away the downside of the market as well. With all so due respect, you can't participate in the market and not participate in the ups and the downs with the index fund. That's the nature, sir, of the index. It's gonna be up and it's gonna be down. That's an, in itself not true as well because because it's not just strictly an investment product. It's a product that you can have a hedge. So if you just do a little bit of research, and I'm not, I'm not going to try to argue with you on this point because I'm familiar with Dalio's uh, theory, and that's all is investment-based products. So everything that he said is 150% correct. But you got to remember, they, they're not taking life-based products into consideration. So they're not considering life-based products, which most investors do not. Because before 10 years ago, because before 10 years ago, they didn't have these life-based products that they have today. They don't have, they didn't have these index products. They only had whole life products, which in turn, all the money went into one bucket and it wasn't individual-based products where you can invest it in the industry that you like. So in these same products, I have clients that, like the S&P 500, they can invest their money in the S&P 500. But the S&P 500 over the last four months has been all down in those investment vehicles. But the other clients who want to get into different indices and they're in the index indices, they get the benefit from multiple indices. And then as well, their products has been up. So in one company, it doesn't mean that one person is going to participate all downs. Also, it doesn't mean a person is going to participate up. But I can. I want to. I want to do this for you, sister. I want to. I want to email you exactly what I'm talking about, so that you can see. Because I okay, can show so you. I can show you the exact performance of these okay, products. Sure. Uh, 
So one thing that I'm, I'm a stickler for, and this is something that when I first started investing, that was very important to me is that like, I follow, to be quite honest, the advice of Warren Buffett, you know, I, that's, that's what I follow. And so, um, with Jack Bogle, it's a very, very simple investment strategy. Um, okay. I hear what you're saying. I don't know about the products that you offer. I'm not familiar that's what with I it. Show so, you. That's, right, that's right. And I, I'll take a look at it, but um, I'm not familiar with that. So I'm not speaking right. on any of the products that you offer. I am simply just telling Dynas, his viewers, I want to be very clear because I think financial education is key. Of the course. beauty of the index fund is that you don't have to go through a middleman. You always want to keep your expense ratio low. Also, you don't want to pay attention when you, you have this, this drop in the market, the bear market. That's the best time. You want to do dollar cost averaging. Basic S&P, just stick to that. You'll have a 6 to 7% return over the long term of 15 years. Some years you may even experience 30% returns. I, I experienced that in 2018, 2019. Um, and then you'll have times like this where you'll have a lot of fluctuation. You don't pay attention to that because you're not moving your money out. That's why I said time is um, a young person's friend or anyone that's invested in the market and they have a long-term strategy because it's really um, at least 10 years that you're going to see, um, you know, that six or 7% return over the long term. I'm not commenting again on your products. I know nothing about what you speak of. I simply am commenting on the very well-known index fund, total stock market, as well as the, um, the S&P 500. And I think that if the viewers were to uh, take a little time and do the research on this, again, you don't have to go through a middleman, the index funds, you just put your money in, to the index fund, you can invest with Fidelity, Vanguard, or even someone but like yourself if you're those, offering the base. Middlemen, but those are middlemen as well, sis. So that but they take four percent. But what are you taking but, with your do you charge? I don't, I don't charge I don't charge my clients anything. Zero. Okay. I don't charge them not one. And I and I think I think the important part, uh, I think Summer is this is attached to a life product. So, you know, I think you're talking just straight investing when we're talking people who uh, are looking for, uh, I would say, a lump sum if in an event something was to happen. So, again, our products are attached to an actual life product. So it's, but, but, I don't want to say, or just, but, but it's, as well, we, we, do, we do investment products as well. So that's why I wasn't, I wasn't trying to make an overall statement. Like everyone should be in one particular product. That's why I stated before we started talking on the topic that that's why we do a financial needs analysis because the most important thing is to be able to do something that's going to work for the client. So if you have a need, if the client has a particular need that they want to be able to do, like when I stated before we got on, if they have a longer time horizon, then, you know, direct, investing directly in the stock market might be a great idea for a person who has 10, 15, 20 years to be able to, and we can do that for them as well. But if the majority of investors that I have worked with, they're not very knowledgeable on how the industry works and they don't have a very high tolerance for loss and they want to make sure that they protect their money and they want to be able to grow it and they don't particularly um, care that they're not getting the full amount from the stock market, they want to be making sure that they're not participating in the downside of the market. So but, I think, mm -hmm. but that that yeah. was my question to you. How do you how do you participate in the market and you don't experience those fluctuations? Yeah. Like I don't because you have to have a product that has a floor on it, and life based products have that floor that allow you not to participate in the downside of the market because they they invest the money in what's called futures. I don't know if you you know anything about um, uh, those investment strategies you'll know that futures are tied to options and I can have an yeah, option. Yeah, that, exactly. And, yeah. and that, that type of speculative, that's what I stay away from. Because yeah, but the companies I, themselves, I stay away from that. Yeah, the yeah. companies themselves are the ones who are investing in speculative investing. You're not. So the money that you have, the reason why, this is why I always people ask me, well, how can a company give you a floor and tell you that you're not going to benefit or you're not going to participate in the downside of the market how are they going to be able to make money? Well, because they invest in futures and options and they know I only have to pay this small amount of money 
And if the stock market goes up and I, it goes against the where I thought it was going to yep. be, the only thing I would lose is a small amount. So they take that loss because on the upside, they're going to take whatever the market would have given you back if you got over the 15% cap. Yeah, so. I understand exactly what you're doing. I had a friend who uh, was involved in that and it did not, with all due respect, work out well for them over the long term. Um, that's why, it. sir, you know, I, I know I can't, inter I, I can't advise your clients and I know you do your work with your clients, but I, I think so, it is uh, so Summer, 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 let me cut you off, Summer. Your friend that I guess had this issue Mm -hmm. Was their product or was her investment tied to a life insurance product? It it was tied to options. No, but no, 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 no. Was it tied to a life insurance product? That's no, it, it it honestly okay, so it, then, it was so tied then, to I, options. I, so I, so yeah, I think the best thing to do is your shot's gonna send you the information. You can research it because again, I, I think the disconnect is. I, I, I think I, I'm trying to work. I'm trying to watch my words carefully. Your tunnel vision, like. Our yes. product is tied to life in a life product, but I guess you're missing that. And so you're looking at the doomsday scenario where we're saying, okay, there's a specific product or, you know, that's tied to something where that doomsday scenario is avoided because it's tied to uh, a life product. But for some reason, I think on your yeah. end, you're like, just, yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree with you. And I, is something that's totally different. And so I this is life insurance, sir. Yes. Is, yes oh, yes. okay. So we're talking about we're talking about two very different things. Correct. So correct. what you're yes. talking about is um, people that are investing through a life insurance uh, policy, and you know, there's a lot of information on this. When I first started investing, to be quite honest, the advice that I received was never um, invest in that, just because the returns are much lower. And so I, I'm familiar with that. But see that that dinos. That's what I, I'm like, why are we as black Americans following the advice of the people who are actually wealthy? Like the Warren Buffetts and their strategy for well, investing. You, sis, guess what? I'm gonna send you an article as well, written by Warren Buffett that tells people to invest in these life-based products. He does the best. Yes, he does. And I'm he gonna send you that article. I'm gonna, I'm gonna send you the same exact article that you can read, sis. It's, Here's what we have to doing so here's what we have to stop doing sis hey watch this here's what we have to stop doing we have to stop saying that there's only one thing and here's what i'm not saying i'm not saying that everybody should put their money into a life-based product there is not one strategy that's good for every single person there are multiple strategies and there have been people who've made money in all these different strategies but there are different options and that's the only thing that I'm saying. I'm saying there are so many different options, but what I'm trying to do is to get our people, and you're included in that as well, I'm trying to get our people to understand that there are different things for us to look at. There are, there are yes. And There's, for, for any of us mm -hmm. to say, that doesn't work, like I'm never gonna tell you that an investment strategy does not work. That's why I do, a financial needs analysis, with all of my clients to, for them to tell me what their loss tolerance is for me to tell me what they want to be able to att attribute or gain in their investments. When I sit down with them and I have this talk with them, I know what they want. And so when I find out what they want, it doesn't matter what I want. I'm going to show them recommendations that go in that are congruent to what they want to be able to accomplish. And I'm never going to tell them you shouldn't invest in this area because it's not for me to tell them that my only job is to do what that person wants. That's the need of a financial advisor. So I'm not going to advise a person to just figure it out on their own. I'm not going to give a person a blanket statement and tell them this is how every investment works because all investments work differently. But what we should do as a people is become more knowledgeable on this whole entire investment spectrum. We should not tunnel vision ourselves off into any area. We should stay knowledgeable about everything. We should read books on everything because at the end of the day, your tolerance level is different than the next person's tolerance level. 
and the two people next door from each other might decide they want to go in two different total directions to get to the same destination. But as long as we're open to hearing information, then we'll know about those different things. But if we say to ourselves, I don't want to hear about that, or, you know, that's not going to work for me. Well, you could say that now, but, you know, I mean, we can all make decisions on, you know, Warren Buffett said himself, he's missed a lot of investments, right? But he said he invests in things that he knows. So at the end of the day, his investment strategy is to invest in the things that he knows, but he's going to miss a lot of different things because he's not knowledgeable about it. But he's not saying don't invest in those other things. He's just saying, I'm not investing in those other things because I don't know about it. But guess what? He said out of his own mouth, there's investment things that I, I should have invested in. But because I had that philosophy that if I don't know about it, I shouldn't invest in it. I missed it. So we can all miss things from not having knowledge. As long as we're open to information, you can use the information or you don't have to use the information. But we should never just say, you know, this is what all black people should do. Because there's no strategy that's good for all black people because black is not an investment strategy. It doesn't matter whether we black or not. What we should do is just like you said, follow the investment strategy of a person who is successful. And I can ramble off to you a whole bunch of people who are successful using this life-based product. You know what? The banks where we put our money at put their top tier finances inside of life-based products. And I'm going to, in that same article that I'm going to send you, is going to be inside of there as well. So all I'm saying is there's a lot of different ways to get to an end result, and we should be open to whatever is going to be best for our current situation. Right. So my response to that, sir, would be that um, I started off again being very ignorant with the market. I avoided it. This was 10 years ago. I educated myself. And once I started um, educating myself through uh, various books on investing, um, listening into different podcasts from uh, very popular people that uh, were able to achieve fire, um, people that have been in this game far longer than I have, mm -hmm. and people that have written best selling books. And, and going back to the source of Warren Buffett, that his letter to his shareholders was that. Um, he, everything that he had should basically be invested uh, upon his death in a broad-based index fund, the total stock market, 90% and 10% in a, a bond index fund. Um, mm -hmm. So with that said, this is perhaps the richest man that we know of at this time, um, who is, as they say, the, the grandfather of all investors. This is who people... Um, listen to and, and they read his advice and they take it because this is someone who has said it's about time and it's about consistency with investing and it's about not investing in anything that's complicated, but yes. just investing over the long term in a non-complicated index fund. You don't, but, there, but some of the invest, smart. But I told you, sister, he invests in these index funds as well. This is an index fund, just like you said, and he invests in these products as well. He does. Right. So I'm sure with his portfolio, he has a, a myriad of it. But like I said, he said upon his death, yeah. what mm -hmm. he wanted for in terms of the um, what he wanted with his estate was that everything, 90 percent was invested in the total stock market and 10 percent towards bonds. I found that to be powerful. There are so many discussions, you know, that took place as a result of that. And I think uh, Jack Bogle with the um, index funds prior to him creating, you know, just matching the market, the total stock market or the S&P 500 or the REITs. Um, there were so many people who were selling all of these bundled products that were very complicated for the average person. And what happened over a period of time, specifically, I would say with uh, black Americans, because they didn't understand the product. And a lot of times if you don't understand something, you can invest in something and next thing you know, because you don't understand it, it's not the right product for you. And maybe you could have had higher returns if someone would have educated you that 
you are supposed to educate, you, you're supposed to have a certain amount of knowledge on whatever it is that you're investing in. You're supposed to understand that there's going to be ups and downs with the market. That's just the nature of it. You're supposed to understand that you're not going to be investing uh, for two years and then pulling your money out. If you plan to do that, you might as well just put your money in a high yield savings account because it's going to be time and consistent investing that's going to yield the highest returns. It's not necessarily the product, really. If you're just regular index S&P 500, historically has yielded, as well as the total stock market, the best returns. And this is 20 years historical record. So what I learned, know your history, because uh, if you don't understand the historical information, how are you going to make an educated decision? So that that was all. I just I love this discussion because I think with your you know I know you have your financial uh, expertise, and I always think it's good to challenge ideas, as you said, because someone may be listening and say, well, wait a second, you know I like that strategy that he's saying, but I want to you know find out more about just this S and P five hundred broad based index funds, or I don't really want to do that. I want to do what you know, he's saying, so I'm going to look into this. I want more information on the products that, you know, he's speaking about. And that whole process, what it forces the person to do is to gain the education. Because at the end of the day, like you said, it is a matter of whatever it is that the person is trying to achieve. Also, we all have different time horizons. That is very true. So I'm not trying to limit anyone's focus. I want to be very clear for me, what has worked, this has been tried and true. I like to know I'm invested in something that has historically been successful. Yeah. And that's just me. But other people that may be more of a risk take or people that may like that life, you know, uh, stuff that you're offering, um, that may work for them the more they look into it. Yeah. But yeah, so so uh, I hope it, that uh, I did but, not, I, I'll leave important. the conversation. Yeah, but I, yeah. I really just wanted to, um, I think it's important. I think it's healthy that when we speak about, you know, investing or financial management, there's always someone that challenges an idea that says, well, wait a second. This is, this is kind of what I know. This is what I've been doing. This is what has helped me. And you just have that exchange because like I said, um, I, I just think that the education piece that's what I, you know, I, I hope that the takeaway for Dinus, his oh, viewers, no, 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 no. is the education piece. Remember, if I can interject, you need to just go ahead and uh, work with me and your shop, especially if you're about the education piece and spreading information. I mean, yes, but see, the, the thing is, and I have to be honest with you, um, because of my investment philosophy, I don't believe in those products. I, I, I don't. I, no, I, I'm, no. a, I'm a stickler. No. Now, sis, what you just said earlier was that we should be open to different things. So like you said earlier, you don't have any information about what it is that we're speaking about. So it would be great if you would be open to at least learn what we're talking about so that at least you can have the knowledge on, you know, exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. and, so, then, and then you'd have something to weigh it on. Because right, right now, you don't have anything to weigh it on. Right now, you're just going off of a philosophy that you believe in because of what you've invested into it. And I have no problem with that because I, I have clients that I've put inside of those investment strategies. So what I do know, sir, is I know that I would never, so I have just uh, life insurance, just regular life insurance. I would never use a life insurance policy for investment purposes. That's not my, as okay. we, as you just walked, you said before that you go by what the client is comfortable with. So for yeah. me, yeah, but I would yeah, never use. But yeah. still, you don't know about these products. So you can't say I would never use it for that. I, I can, I can, I can, to, I can say that. Sir. Know what it, you, you need to know what it is. Like you just, you just closed yourself off. You said you weren't trying to bring, uh, you know, like a distraction, but what you just did was just say, whether it's good or not, I'm not going to do it. No, because uh, that's so very, that's very close minded. And that's a problem that a lot of our people have where we've been extremely close minded where we're not open to things. Like so let me explain to you why, so I can educate you on what I know about that. So my uh, philosophy on investing is, so why would I invest in a uh, life insurance policy that offers 
limited options for uh, investing. Uh, but 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 hear me out. Hear me out for one second. But but hear me out. Hear me out for one second. You're making please. a blanket statement. No, I can't do that because you're making a blanket statement about something that you don't know anything about. about. You just okay, said but, limited. You're making statements about it, and you have zero knowledge about. Summer, it. Summer, summer, summer. It's okay to say I don't know. Send me the information. Let's schedule yeah. it. But see, Dinus, that's what I'm saying. So you're making Dinus, a that's what about it that you know nothing about. So, Dinus, about it. But, that, but that's what I'm trying to explain to you. When I first started looking at what are what is my investment strategy, and I was educating myself on what would be best for me, and I looked and I said, okay, my mom had a long-term um, you know, life insurance policy that offered those type of options of investing. and yeah, a whole life policy. She had a whole life, yes. But it was, totally, but it was a, like I said, I made the analogy of the cell phone where you used to have brick phones before and it's a cell phone just the same, but it's not the same kind of phone as what we have in our hands today. We have something that's much more powerful that can do so many more things. And if a person was to use their limited thought process off of the old brick phones and think that that's the same thing that we have in our hand today, it would be ignorant. And it would not be using yeah. their right judgment. And all so, I'm saying is the most important thing in anything in life is to be open to new things. I, I'm when not I, saying yeah. that you have to agree with it. I'm not right. saying that you have to accept it. I'm just saying when you say I'm not going to and you have no idea how it works, then you would have never found out about that index thought process if you were thinking that way. So the reason why I found out about the index funds was because I was early on just invested in bonds, to be honest. I, 10 years ago, I had a 401k and because I was just trying to play it safe, I was thinking that that, that was the best investment strategy for me. I yeah, was ignorant about that. But, but you were open, correct? Were I only open. became open yeah. to it after I started doing the research, but what I do know that's about okay, that, but that's, it's still, but, it's still making this point that I'm making. Sir, I, I, you I, are I hear you. Something else and you did research and you looked into it. All I'm saying is you're just being very closed minded right now. And you're saying that whether I give you the information or not, whether I show you what I'm talking about or not, you're not going to be interested. And I'm just saying that's not a very good philosophy. We're on an open forum where we're trying to educate people. We're trying to inform them about different things. Nowhere in the strategy have I ever said that what you said was not correct. All I said was there are other options other than what you said. And what you're saying is there's no other option. No, what no, no, that, that wasn't what I said. I, I, I said my investment strategy for me, what I'm comfortable with right. is based on the history of the S&P 500 and the total stock. That's what I'm comfortable you're, with. You're talking about what's comfortable for you. Yes. We're, we're talking about a spectrum for different people. We're not just talking about for one person. Oh, right, right. But I was explaining yeah, to right. Dinus when he said, well, why are you interested in, you know, um, having, I don't know, whatever it is that, and I said to him, I could never advise someone on something that I myself would not do. So yeah, I'm, well, I'm just- I, I understand that. I understand. The, summer, the, the disconnect is the one product or service that Yisha brought up is just one of many. Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't think yeah. you- that's kind of what's going that's on. That's it. I'm like, we were talking about one topic, and you know, it became like the devil topic or something. Like, you know, we were trying to tell people to go out and you know, and and, and convert from uh, their religion to you know, idol worship or something. Right, and I'm it's kind of like when people bring up cryptocurrency, right, or Bitcoin. Yeah. Depending uh -huh. on your philosophy on investing, you may just kind of like, oh, I don't even want to talk about that. That's not something yeah, that I. Don't. Uh, that's I not that's the uh, difference between myself. I'm like, I'm, I'm, not saying that I'm not open to anything. Like there are many different things out there. This is the beauty of what we're doing here. Investments have so many different facets and allow you to be able to experience it in so many different ways. And for you to close yourself off to all of these different ways of making money. Do you understand that people have made money in so many different ways over- I have a question for you, sir. Years? Are huh? you financially independent? Yes, I am. So when did you achieve, can you just educate the audience on what your financial independence, like what that looks like, you know, for you? Because I'll admit well, at I'm this stage- here, I'm living here in Albuquerque, New Mexico. 
And I moved out here to Albuquerque, New Mexico at the beginning of the coronavirus. I do 100% of my work online right here on the computer. I don't, I don't have to go into an office or anything. I have an office in California that I have. I have um, assistants that work there in the office in California. But I do all my work from across the country. All of these podcasts that I'm doing with you right now, all the assignments or whatever um, appointment I'm doing with my clients, training classes that I do with all of my agents that work with me. I do it all from the comfort of my own home. That's what I consider as financial independence. So, so that is so financial independence for the fire community um, that I'm a part of. What it essentially means is that you don't ever have to do anything again, because once you reach whatever that number is, so you can you can obviously do online stuff. You can write a book. You can do that. But I'm financial independence. What it so, so sis, I'm not in this for me not to have to do anything again. I, I don't. Yeah. So I, I have don't, a, I have a grassroots crusade to be able to educate our people on finances. I'm not in this just to be able to make money just for myself. I wanna be able to show people how to be able to fire their boss, to leave their job, to not have to go work a job to be able to get income and to not have to work period to get income. Because I don't know if you understand, there's different quadrants of how you make money. There's the employee quadrant, which is 85% of our people and people in the world period are a part of. That means they exchange their time for money. They go to a job and they work to be able to get money. They don't have any leverage. They don't have the ability not to work. So they don't have passive income. And I believe that's what you're making mention of. I have passive income. That's not uh, what I was referring to, sir. What, what I was referring to was- well, I'll just tell you this, because because we can go all day. No, 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 but can I just please finish this point? Because this is important. I mean, look, it, what your point is going to be is not going to be to the point of what we're trying to accomplish here. What we want to accomplish is to educate people on financial strategy, all financial strategy. But what I'm trying to point out, not sir. One, so not just one financial strategy. We're not just trying to- I, I hear get a you. Person to believe. I'm not pushing a religion, so I don't, I don't get, have to get a person to believe in a financial strategy because there are so many different financial strategies open. I hear you. I hear you 100%. Life -based products. There's 100% investing in the stock market. There's so many different ways that a person can get to financial independence. But here's the one way that they can't, just by working a job. And that's the majority of people that their strategy has all been just working. And our main focal point on having these presentations is to be able to get people to get outside of just being dependent. And the only way that you're going to be able to do that is you're going to have to be open to different things. So why I why I specifically posed that question to you was mm -hmm. because uh, for me, that was very important early in my journey. I knew, um, as you had mentioned, when you speak with clients, you get a feel of what exactly they are interested in and you use their philosophy in terms of what they want, not what you want. Right. Mm -hmm. So when I started uh, with my investment journey, what I wanted was regardless of, and I believe I will work until the day I die, not work in terms of working for someone else, but working in terms of writing books, blogs, that sort of thing, educating people on topics that are uh, of interest to me um, and, and building, you know, a coalition of educated people around, you know, topics like nutrition, health, wellness, and finance. But my, my point was that Regardless of all of that other stuff, when I reach my fire number based on the Trinity study, and as long as the market performs or acts, you know, kind of in the historical nature with regard to the returns, I don't ever have to generate any income again. I could literally just pull from my investment under 4%, and for the rest of my life, be able to live the same standard that I'm living now, because that is how the FIRE number was calculated. It was based on uh, my monthly expenses. So that was what the question really got at. And so the philosophy on investing, it, it mirrors that. When I, when I have these conversations with people, I'm, I'm to be honest, because that's what I want to achieve. That's what our rich journey achieved. That's what Graham Stephan achieved. That's what mm -hmm. the people that 
uh, are a part of the uh, financial independence, I'll leave out the retire early because you many people continue to work. They work for themselves. They love what they do. Um, I'm, not, I'm not looking to retire. Well, yeah, so not retire, but the financial independence. And, and the part of why I even came in this whole discussion is because I was thinking, given all of this interest that Black Americans have in um, moving to Africa and living in Africa long term, I was saying to myself, wow, imagine if they achieve financial independence within 10 years and they could simply relocate to whatever country they want to relocate to. They could uh, even move across countries and, and have like that kind of, you know, which I think is actually cool, like go from country to country. And yes, they can do their own thing, maybe social media, whatever it is that they're involved in, starting a school, but they would always have that investment that they could just pull 3% down here, 2% down. It would probably be much less if they were um, living on the African continent. But what I'm saying is they would have that, that nest egg. And, and that was really the whole reason why I joined. So I was really looking at it from the standpoint of true financial independence. You always wanna be productive, regardless if you achieve financial independence. You always want to do what your passion is, but just having that ability where you don't have to generate any income. You can just really volunteer. You can do whatever and you're set. That That's really because I was just I was a little concerned, quite frankly, when I would listen into some of these discussions and people would just discuss having five thousand dollars and relocating to Nigeria or to Ghana with twenty thousand dollars. And I would shake my head and say, but why do that? Because they're only going to be back in the States in five years. Why not have like a 10-year plan, do what you have to do, work hard, have your side hustles, invest consistently, and get those returns, reach your FIRE number, even if that FIRE number is just seven, $800,000. That's achievable. And but draw you down 2%. Do you understand every that? Year that people... Do you understand that's not what people are trying to achieve? They're, they're, the historic background of our people is we've been trying to achieve the millionaire status. We've been looking for a number that's not even inside the reality of the working person's um, opportunity. People have been looking to be able to hit a number because we've been given a number. It's not a number that people came up with. They've been giving the number, if you want to be successful, you got to make a million dollars. So the mass majority of people are looking to be able to have a million dollars by the time they get to retirement. So they're putting money into a retirement fund, hoping to be able to get a million dollars by the time they get to retirement. And I've sat down with thousands of, of retirees, and I'll say probably 1% of those retirees have actually had a million dollars when they got to retirement. So my question to that would be, did those people that you sat down with, so firstly, it would have to be, were they invested in broad-based index funds like the S&P 500 over their the life cycle? And were they maxing out their 401k consistently oh every goodness. year? So, so it doesn't matter if you max out your 401k. If you have your investment inside of vehicles that's going to be able to go down, then you, you can invest you can max out your 401k all you want to and the downturns of the market you're going to lose money so i've had clients that by the time you if I, if I can, if I can interject uh, mm -hmm. summer you know so i know you keep bringing up the 401k mm -hmm. people who are about about to retire before the you know what hit the fan in 2008 that were maxing yeah, they out money in 401k too yeah the 401ks were gone so that no, so I just to give and you a little the history. That, of the uh, that was the best said, time. Four hundred one k is not the thing to put your money in nowadays. It's not like the four hundred one k is is not the investment vehicle. It's not the strategy, you know, because it's it's too much tied into the downside loss of the market. Mutual funds is something that a younger person could put their money inside of because they have time to be able to look at the growth and loss time frame, the time horizon they have is longer. But, you know, the clients that are like 60 years old, 64 years old, about to retire, they can't stand the loss like they would have in a 2008 or 2010. They can't, their money is not going to be able to sustain a loss like that. They don't have the time 
to build that money back up. So they need other strategies to be able to put their money in to avoid loss. Yeah, I mean, so I can I can just speak to this and say that the best thing that happened was 2008. I, I hate to say that, and that that hurts me. Summer, summer, yeah. summer. Hey, 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 experience. No, everybody summer. has oh, a right to their opinion, oh, no, right? No. And some, people some, did some, make some, money some, in 2008, some, but it's like you know the blanket some, treatments some, are just a little bit too. Uh, no, I say <laughs> that because when the market crash, you get stuff on sale. That is the best time to be yeah, doing the investing. Not, everybody is not yeah. investing. Everybody isn't investing. Summer. But everybody that's what I'm saying, saying that we need to be. We need to be yeah, investing during the downtime. Like now is the time. Summer, respectfully so. Everybody is not. There's never been a time where everybody has done anything. So for us to say one thing, that's why I'm, I'm trying to respectfully say. There is no one strategy that everyone is going to buy into. So for us to try to push one strategy over another strategy and say that this is the best strategy for everyone, that's not the case, Summer. And I'm, I'm sorry. I hear you. <laughs> Graham, are you familiar with uh, Graham Stephan? I'm sorry, Dynas. I called you Graham. Are you familiar with Graham Stephan by any chance? Uh, yes, I am, Summer. I'm very okay, so you, you're very familiar with Graham Stephan. Yes. And you follow. I love Graham. I love him to death. In terms of the work that he's done. The point again that you're missing, and we it started off with you had no clue, you had no clue what index life insurance that's tied to index funds was about. It's just, and again, and Yiksha just said, and me and Fitzgerald Stevens say all the time, there we're not saying that all we're we're not on here saying that our way is the only way. And but some I think what's coming off from you is you're saying your way is the only way because of your personal experience. Now I think it's very uh problematic when you said in 2008 was the best time for people to invest when i know plenty of people who literally lost their whole entire 401k and, and they didn't have, have, have anything to it they have nothing to invest i just think that's very problem problematic can i people. explain sir why i said uh, that dinas uh, uh, can i just now? explain to you why listen, i said we, that uh, listen, you're not so we had we uh, let you explain no that. no that no because that that's important the reason why i said that is because the philosophy of true we investing. God, Summer, we know the philosophy, buy low, sell high. I mean, no, 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 not sell high. No, oh, not sell okay, high. We know the buy low. Listen, we know, Summer, know the philosophy. Buy low, buy low consistently. Everyone does not follow all of the best so, philosophy so, and everything. So, what, Dinus, if you're upset at me and you no, follow no, no, Graham no, Stephan. Summer, then, Summer, Summer, you are not upset you're with me. Summer, please don't make it that someone is upset with you. You're not upset with me. No one is upset with you. It's what just, we're saying is you can't make blatant statement summers and and push yourself off to be that you're the only person who has a strategy that works. So, uh, that's the only thing we're saying. We're not saying there's anything wrong with you. We're just saying on a forum like this, when we're all trying to say the best thing for our people to do is to get financial information. We all agree on that. So yes. nobody, nobody and, saying, and that is why nobody I, I, saying we shouldn't do that. And but that's why I posed that question. Does he know who Graham Stephan is? You're trying to monopolize the whole entire conversation. All we're saying is we're on here trying to get people to be open to everything. We're saying it's all right for them to be open to what you're saying, but you're saying it's not all right to be open to what we're saying. And all we're saying is you're on Dynasty's show. We're not on the summer show. So if we came on your show and you could tell us whatever you want to tell us, but you can't come on Dynasty's show, and tell people on Dinah's show, don't listen to what he's saying. Just listen to me. I listen to people who have actually, uh, Graham Stephan, his net worth is $11 okay. million. So, dollars. So his investments saying, are all in BP you can, Sachs. You can listen to whoever you like to listen to, but we have a show here that we're trying to inform people and you're coming on and telling people, you know better. So can you just give me the handle to your show so that we can tell people to come to your show and watch you? I think that what this has revealed to me is that oh, summer, summer, summer. Send it to you. you don't have a format because if you had a format, you'd understand that coming on another person's format and so totally sidebar summer, we, we gave you more than 40 something minutes to, to, to put across your points. All I'm saying is that's we've been on here for two hours and 40 something minutes. So you've had a large portion of the time frame. All I'm saying is, Summer, you just have to realize it's not just about you. It's not about us. 
It's about making sure that we get more of our people financially educated. That's what we want to do. We want to make sure that more of our people understand how money work, compound interest, the rule of 72, the power of time, all of these things that we talked about. It's direly important because coronavirus has exposed that our people were the least prepared because we had no knowledge of how money works. All of our finances was garnished on our jobs. We got all of our money from working a nine to five, which in turn means we were working from paycheck to paycheck. You got some people, 58 million people who apply for unemployment. They are un they're on unemployment and then the state ran out of unemployment. They don't have any money coming into our household right now. They don't have any money to invest. What I'm telling people is we got to get them out of these jobs and get them to the point they can provide for themselves. Absolutely. So, Entrepreneurship is definitely the best so way to go. I actually the think that most yeah, that's, the of income, that's the conversation that we're having today. Summer. But all I was saying was that the tried and true, like I, I love Graham okay, so, for that reason. So, so, and Dinus, if you could just okay. speak on, no, and so, you so, said so, that you know his channel, you, you know Graham this, Stephan's this, channel. This, Go, you, go to okay. Hold on, hold on. Stop just, it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. We've come to the end of our part of the session, you know, know because we're trying to, we're trying to take the full go. spectrum of knowledge. Right. Again, Summer, it's just you're being very close minded, and I don't appreciate it. Again, I, I enjoy discourse, but it's just you're being combative now. That's what you're doing. So I'm just going to advise that either A, start your own show or go to uh, Graham show. Okay. Okay. Well, like I said, I just I thank you for allowing me on your program. Um, and, you know, as a black American woman, I did not know about investing. I took the time to learn what I knew. I, I developed that strategy. Like you said, yeah. sir, there are so many people that are out of work at this there time. Is. They yeah. have a zero net worth. It's yeah. going to reduce even further. They said by 2050, the right. average uh, African American, I think will be a negative net worth at that time. Right. And that's right. what we've been doing, yeah. Sis. We've been, we've been showing people how to be able to start their own business, how to start their own financial services business, educating other people on how to be able to manage their money, how to be able to take care of their finances. And it's been working for people because it gives them an opportunity to be able to get educated on things that they didn't know about before. And I Happy think that's wonderful. Before. And I applaud you for that. And like I said, I'm just an average person. And I look at myself and say, how was I able to amass what I amassed? And it was just by working my six figure job, having multiple side hustles and investing consistently. So sometimes I guess when I push that, that's because perhaps that is how I was able to amass $500,000 in my investment. Yeah, but no, Sid, what we said at the end of the day is, uh, what we said uh, at the uh, end of the day is, that's all right. But yeah, that's it, not yeah. everybody's strategy. That's and that, that's true. And that I have to respect yeah. that. Like you said, I yeah. respect that that's not everyone's strategy. And I, I apologize if I were. Because some, some, because some, I, I've known people that work six figure jobs. I work with them that invested in real estate. Yes. And I, yes. Yeah. Hard, you, should have, the market. Got, yeah. you should have invested in real estate. You should have got down with WFG. What's wrong with you? WFGs, you know, I, I, our index fund, index fund. What's wrong with your real estate? Index fund, index fund, you know, it's-, it's Can I it's share like, something with you, what? Dinas? So Go I ahead. told you that I live in the DC metro area. And another thing that I, cause I, I'm initially from New York. And when I lived in New York at the time, I lived in a brownstone in Harlem. And right at that time, there was massive gentrification um, taking place. And right. I saw that, you know, my family, my mom used to tell me that those brownstones uh, around the Mount Morris Park area, would go for a dollar because yeah, no on. one. About that on the, yeah, we just talked about that on the last, about that on the last show. Yeah. Right. And so, Monday, me and your shot just talked about that. Literally so, on Monday, we talked about yeah. that. So, three yeah. of my, uh, my not my mom's friends, but like um, that, that was really during my grandparents' era, to be honest, like when they were going for a dollar, I guess. And everyone wanted to move to the suburbs because the that was the epidemic of the heroin epidemic and just a lot of stuff. And of course, during the 80s, the crack cocaine epidemic. Long story short, my mom's friend inherited three of those um, those brownstones mm -hmm. from her family and, and they didn't pay anything for it. Guess what? And it was, I think, 2007 yeah, or so, 2006. Over a million. Even, yeah. 
it was closer to, because that area has always been beautiful, but it just had a lot of issues with uh, crime and, and things of that nature. But they assessed it at $2.1 million. That's right. Yeah. And she has also in Bed-Stuy, Brownstone. So I say that to say that, obviously, I don't have $2.1 million to buy that brownstone and, and, and wait it out and see you what happens. But, you don't really, you don't. But what I did have, but what I did have, no, but what I did have, Dinas, was because I lived in a DC metro area, I said, look at Baltimore. Look at the fact that no one wants to really, uh, I hate to say this, but invest in, people are investing in Baltimore, but it's, you, you can still get, you know, uh, really, really great deals. And so outside of the stock market, what I did was I bought three row homes and what was interesting is, and this is just me, I, I have um, no real estate background. If you were to say like, I, I really didn't know anything, what I was doing, I, I just said, you know something, I want to be that person that when they build the, the high speed rail from Baltimore to Washington DC, and they will, I can just sit back and say, now I have this investment where no one wanted to invest in this particular community. And I am so proud of myself that I, I went for it, I did it. Um, and so I just think that, yeah, the education piece, getting over um, you know your obstacles with not understanding things. And I hear you when you say you have to be open to you know those different um, things and learn about um, different investment strategies. But I guess that is part of the reason why I was so, I have that tunnel vision because it, it's just, and that's that's but, just me, you know, with that but, philosophy. But by way of having tunnel vision, you close yourself off on being able to experience gains in other areas. That's the only thing that I'm saying. I'm saying I understand what your philosophy is. If it works, don't fix it. But remember, it wasn't a philosophy that people always went by. That philosophy that you're going by right now is a philosophy that someone who is not 100 years old came up with. So you have to understand that it's not something that it, it had to, people had to grow into this philosophy. They had to grow by way of experiencing other things that got them to be able to come up with this philosophy that he has. So all I'm saying is you have to be open because when new strategies present themselves, if you're not open, you're not gonna be able to benefit from it because you're just going to be closed off to one thing. Yeah, that's that's definitely that's fair. Um, I I'll just say for myself, I like I said, that's what I do. But you're right. I I do think that yeah. a person should educate themselves, and they should of be open to different opportunities. Um, yeah. and and really just do the research. That that's what I would to, say. Just and they don't have to do it by being open. That just means that they're open to research. Yeah, yeah, just open to the research right. aspect. Open we don't to have to be open aspect. to do it because everybody isn't going to do the same exact thing. You just have to be open, you know? Yeah. Right. But for me, again, I, I just look at it as they put all of this information out there about Black people's net worth. They said that Black women have a, a what was it, a net worth? I think they said $5 or something like that a while ago in 2010. No, no, of, of course, but I'm saying this Actually, was- Black this women was, have amassed more money than Black men have. Yes, and, but yeah. but at one time that, that figure, because I think with the student loans and all of that stuff, that figure was circulating. And so yeah, for but we, me- Yeah, we gotta, we gotta, we can't quote old numbers because, you know, what we're looking at nowadays is a epidemic of loss. The numbers that are in the coronavirus era have not even been publicized as of yet because we have lost so much standing where we're at because the majority of our people are in the working class. The majority of our people work nine to five and do not have a side business, do not have anything different. You know, yeah, you, you, have, to, you have to understand that that's what it is. You know, <laughs> he said the rule of thumb: don't believe yeah. nobody who won't show their face. Yeah, well, I'll tell you. I'll tell you why. Because hey, look, don't explain it. Yeah, no, no, that's important. I, I think yeah, that's important that's to explain philosophy. why. You know, I don't think it's anything you're gonna say is gonna change this process. And I know, but I'll tell you why. It's because of the sector that I actually work in. It's not. It's not finance or anything like that. 
but um, it, it's just one of those things where yes, I, I don't think they're monitoring Dinah's show. No, no, but you know, just the sector that you work in, I don't think they're going to be looking at Dinah's show like to try to figure out what you're doing, Summer. <laughs> no, but I, I just kind of have that philosophy where I, I don't know. I, I'm just old hey, school Summer, like that. that I'm that's old why I like no that. Job, Summer, because I'm not scared. No, I no, no, but you. and I hear I you. <laughs> I hear you, but the thing is, I have the Amazon store, I have the real hey, estate, yeah. you know, it is, what it is. That's the other thing. That's why I tell people. And I'm I'm glad you segue to that because I tell people all the time I have clients that work over at Amazon stores, and they have shut down their store right. because here's here's the reason why they shut down their store. They shut down their store because of complaints from a client that they had, and because their client said they didn't receive their product on time or whatever have you. And right now, a lot of people are not receiving their products on time because a lot of the products are coming from China, and that's all. Hold See, up. I make my own. I make my own. I actually um, sell like candles and incense and all of that stuff. But here's so, the point um, that I'm making so that you understand, because I, I don't want to, I'm not promoting nobody else. That's, <laughs> not, that's not you, Summer. That's just me, period. But the reason why his business is suffering is because he does not have a business. He works for Amazon. Right. He sells his own products, but he sells his own products through Amazon. And Amazon makes the rules and decides what you can do, the ethics and all these other things. They can decide they don't want you to sell your products and they can do just like they did to the dentist's office over the last few months, which called them a non-essential worker. I don't know about you, but if you had a dentist appointment and you had a cavity, the dentist would be an essential worker. They said that the dentist wasn't essential and they closed down their offices. So, sis, look. They did that because of the PPE, the... uh uh, they didn't have enough protective equipment. They first had to go to the hospitals. Not, the hospital didn't have enough protective. Remember, I told you, I worked 18 years in the hospital. The, the hospital didn't have prote enough protective covering, and they didn't close the hospitals down. They still did surgical procedures inside of the hospital, and people were bringing their own masks to the hospital. Did you know that, sis? People were bringing their own masks to the hospital. They ran out of all the PPEs, not just at the dentist's office. They ran out of the PPEs all over the country because the majority of our PPEs was coming from China. When they so, shut down the factories in China, they couldn't provide all of the PPEs here in the United States. So I know that it was state specific because I also I actually work in healthcare no. policy. Mm -hmm. state, no. Because every state was, is, so is it was responsible for their own specific. stockpile. No, oh, I'm talking about the dentist's office. The oh, dentist's okay. Yeah, I was just speaking about the was not state specific. They closed the dentist's office throughout the whole United States. Yes, I, they absolutely. They were non-essential workers. Yes, but I was yeah. referring to the PPE that that's state specific because really when people were complaining about the hospitals not having the, the correct amount of PPE and they were blaming the uh, federal administration, current president, it's really up to the states to have their own stockpile. So that well, misinformation, there, well, that, that just wasn't- There wouldn't be any stockpile, sis, because just like when they had a- um, they had a backlog of, of saline solution inside the hospital. The reason why that was because the mass majority of saline came from places like Puerto Rico. And when you saw the devastation in Puerto Rico, they couldn't provide the saline solution to the hospitals. So they had a big backlog. So it wouldn't matter if it's only the state. The only difference is certain areas that weren't doing the same amount of procedures as other areas. So they had a backlog of PPE and the hospitals that were doing multiple procedures. And one day they had a backlog because they used up all of their PPE. It's, it doesn't have anything to do with the states because the states aren't the one that's manufacturing those PPE. No, what I was referring to is that the state is responsible with respect to ensuring that they have um, the PPE, that they have that stockpile in the event of an emergency. That's just a part of the emergency preparedness plans that every state is really supposed to have because so, the state is So the states are not depending. The states are not the ones who are taking care of it. It's a federal program. And it was a, a federal program that was put in because of the pandemic that took place, the, the swine flu and different things that happened under the Obama administration. They had a, a contingency program for the federal government to be able to take up the slack because of the states were not going to be able to have enough because they ran out of 
PPE when, when no swine but flu. Yeah, sir. But the, so this is the area that I actually work in, and that's what I'm trying to explain. I work in that area too, sis. So, so uh, you worked at the I, federal or the I state work, or what? I work in the hospital. I not, okay. I didn't work on a federal level, but so, I worked in the hospital, and I know the federal laws because I lobbied for legislation in the medical field. So, right. And so all that I'm just pointing out is that during before any pandemic occurs, every state is supposed to have different procedures in place, emergency procedures, preparedness yeah, but, in place. But this is totally different. This coronavirus is not like the regular pandemics that's been happening. This has shut down the whole entire world. We're not just dealing with, you know, we're not just dealing with something that's contingent to each state. You're dealing with something that the manufacturers of the PPEs are in countries that's been the most stricken with the coronavirus. So you can't even can't even utilize the same uh, thought processes that we would have used for every day. You know, we're just PPEs for everyday surgical use. Or look, I just went the other day to Home Depot. Home Depot used to have the N95 mask at Home Depot. They have not had the N95 mask at Home Depot since the beginning of the coronavirus. The reason why is because they don't even provide the N95 mask to the Home Depot, Lowe's, and all of those places any longer because they need them for the medical facilities. So we're not even anywhere near. The conversation is totally different than if it would have been a regular conversation about how the federal government and how the states are providing stuff. This is an emergency. But see, that, that ties earlier. into what we were speaking about earlier. So here's what I was just trying to point out, that what happens a lot of time is that during the non-emergencies is when you really want to be prepared. So right now in my, um, <laughs> in my basement, actually, I have a lot of different, you know, in my pantry as well, it, just food items, yeah, uh, canned goods. This is so months, this I'm sorry. This is eight months. This coronavirus has been going yes, on eight but months. I hear you, but so also other essential things that during emergencies that people tend to like to oh. rush out and get in, in oh, bulk supply. Yeah. So all that I was saying is that unlike most people, when we had the different stay at home orders and when people were going to the grocery stores and they noticed that they couldn't get toilet paper and other items, guess what? Because during the good times, I already had my stock supply. So that was the furthest thing from my that's, mind. That's strategies. So a lot of people, the reason why they're in the situation that they're in right now is because in good times, when it was times to be able to put money away and save for the future, they didn't do that. Exactly. But this is a habit. So you're talking about something that is the way that people do everything. They don't do just one thing that way. They do everything that way. Exactly. And so that explains yeah. why a lot of people were very much unprepared and why those people who took an interest in their financial health, it yeah. doesn't just apply to the financial health, it also ties into the physical Every health too, right? Well, so it's that's also- why, that's, why we educate, that's why we educate people about everything, sis. That's the whole point. That's the point that I'm making. We're educating people on all of these different areas because at the end of the day, What's the way you do one thing is how you're going to do everything. That's correct. I, I agree yeah. with that. Yeah. So I'm going to like bow out of the conversation now. But yeah, it was really interesting. Um, I hope that you think I, I brought, <laughs> you know, I added some additional stuff any, to the conversation. Any conversation is going to be an addition to this. Whether, you know, I don't take, that's why I, I, I wanted to be clear with you. I, I don't. I don't dislike you or anything of that nature. I mean, that's just a very strong statement. I'm just saying in a discourse, when we're having a conversation with each other, there are multiple, there's more, as they say it back in the days, I'm 50, so I don't know how old you are, but there's more than one way to skin a cat. That's been the philosophy forever. And that's a tried and true philosophy. So Absolutely. When, anyone, when anyone says, you got to do it this way and you can't do it any other way. Well, that person hasn't been along. They haven't been alive long enough because there's so many different people who can tell you I benefited from this. I benefited from that. There are so many different ways to do what we're talking about. Our discourse today is to tell people 
the most important thing to do is to be a part of the conversation. Yeah, it is very important. And I'll just quickly add that the reason why I even brought up grim stuff, and I do this in my life I, in terms of my philosophy, I look at people who have already achieved what I want to achieve and I don't try to reinvent the wheel. Yeah. I say there's nothing special about them. They simply just had a certain strategy. Let me learn from them in terms of what was their strategy and let me follow that strategy and see if I could have success and meet the goals that I'm trying to meet. And what I noted was that- Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, but Summer, not, not to cut you off, I'm so sorry, but I think the issue is you're not even giving us an opportunity because if you, I, I hopped on a call last night, a conference call that we had, and I pretty, I'm pretty sure people who the, the people who presented um, achieve the goals that you're trying to achieve. So, you know, when you completely just shut everything down and we're saying, here, here goes the information and you're saying, no, I'm going to do it my way. It's not going to work. You know, I, I just, it just kind of, it just comes off kind of disingenuous. I'm just, I'm just being honest. When you say you have certain goals that you're trying to mm -hmm. achieve, and I know for a fact, because we're not a monolith, there are plenty of people in our organization that have achieved those goals. I mean, I, I listened to them last night. So okay, I, I, so I'll check out that conversation because I, I didn't list it. Right. But I did actually, I said to your, your original guest, I said, did you achieve financial independence? And he told me what his version of financial independence was. Yeah, and but, but, my, but you just, you asked me what my financial, and I'm not giving you a blanket statement of what financial independence is altogether because there is no one, one person's financial independence is not everyone's financial independence. Everybody's idea of financial independence is not the same. Yeah, I, I was just it. going by the standard definition. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, that, that, no was it, really. that, no that was it, really. That was it. Okay, so there is no standard definition of financial independence. An amount of money that one person might need is not the amount of money that everyone. Yeah, but need. the concept is the same. The concept is whatever the oh. amount is. You, you don't, don't ever have to, have to work. You can just sure. draw it down 4% sure. based on the Trinity I, study. And I don't have to work. And I don't work. I, I, have a, I have a business that gives me residual income. So the point that I'm making is, you know, anything blanket, you should run away from that. You should run away from anything that anyone tells you. Don't listen to anyone else. Because no one is, has the perfect solution for everyone. No so like, I, yeah, so sir, for me, I have to be honest that when I started really doing the research and I yeah. started educating myself, so I'm being honest. That you have come up with, somebody taught you the perfect investment strategy, it's a lie. Not the no perfect, one, but when I compare no myself. The, no, sis, no one has the perfect investment strategy because if it was, then the, it would only be perfect for that one person. It's only perfect for them. It's I not hear you. I anyone. hear what you're saying, but you I know, do have to. The strategy that you may right. mention to wouldn't work for a person who's 65 years old. Who's Absolutely about to right. Years you're old. right. So then it, then you have to come to the conclusion that it's not the perfect investment strategy. For me. I said for me, for myself. So that's what I'm saying. The difference between you and I, sis, is the things that I'm trying to say to people is for everyone, not just for myself. I'm not trying to teach people a philosophy that just applies to me. We're on here to educate people that on what's going to work for them, what's going to be the most important thing for them. See, financial strategists for years have made the mistake of making the philosophy of financial information contingent on what's most important to them, which has been their bottom line which has been the strategy that's going to get them the highest commission, the strategy that's going to put the most money in their family's coffers, which is going to put the most money in their bank account. And I started off by telling you, sis, I don't charge my clients anything because I want my clients to know that the information that I'm giving them is non-biased. I'm not giving them information just because I feel it's the best. That's why I do a financial needs analysis. I do a financial needs analysis to find out what they want. So I can, if I wanted to just give them my own strategy, I just tell them, this is what you should do. And we wouldn't need an appointment. I can just give them a financial plan and tell them to follow that. That's what you're telling people. You're telling people, this is what works best for me. And this is the only thing I believe in. And I'm just saying, that's the worst thing that we can do as a people is to tell anyone 
this is the only thing and there's nothing else. So there's always goodness in discourse and the conversating with people, but there's never goodness when you try to just come from one philosophy and you just push that philosophy and you're not open to anything else. Yeah, I Like I said, I simply just stumbled a few years ago on that information and I followed it, Dinah. Yeah, but, um, but this. I don't know how to pronounce that your works, first name. Uh, that works Yik for you. Yeah, Yitzhak, like a pair Yik, of socks. Yitzhak. Um, uh -huh. So I, I followed that and what happened was I was watching my friends, my black American um, friends, female friends, who their networks were not going up and I amassed the network of 500,000. I'm a regular person. Yeah. And so for me- That's one, that one person's philosophy though. Sarah. I know, but I, I have, because of that, I have to say that I am so vocal a lot of times because I want yeah, other but people- everybody, But everybody is not in the same position that you're in who's, who's utilized that same investment strategy. Every single person is not in the same position that you're in, sis. That's all I'm I saying. I hear you. And yeah, I we've been going back and forth about this. And you're right. The key, as yeah. you said, is just education. But all yeah. that I was really trying to get across, this is it really in a nutshell. I was just simply trying to get across that. What I learned was simply just keep it simple, invest yeah. consistently. Yeah. Yes. Be comfortable and confident about the investment strategy that you choose. Understand your time horizon because that's going to yeah. determine what type of investment you make. And again, ride it out because when you're uh, investing consistently yeah. in the market, you're going yeah. to have ups and downs. But if you are yeah. the. Um, that, that strategy you got right there, that is a strategy that now you do not have to utilize just that. That's all I'm saying. I'm saying you can benefit from the upside of the market without participating in the downside of the market at all. You can you can benefit from from strategies that allow you to have all gains instead of loss. I have a question for you, sir. Yeah. Did you by any chance? Um, I don't know if you've watched CNBC with there was a young I don't know if you follow Yvette Carnell but she did an episode on um he has a YouTube channel I I just cannot I think his name was Jerome or something and um it's black American young guy from Baltimore who was featured on CNBC Millennial Money okay. and he was only making I think twenty five thousand dollars but had this idea that he wanted to invest half of his money um in the market that sort of thing um and so i was and listening to you i was just wondering if you were familiar with his story because I don't know. you're not because i did an entire episode on that so that broke my heart because yeah. what i was thinking when i watched that is um firstly just how far behind many black americans are with respect to the the income component and I know he was driving for Uber. He was doing all of those sorts of things, but he just was not able to um, make the type of money that he really would need to make to comfortably have an emergency fund as well as comfortably but right invest now, in the market. You know, so, but that's not the, but we can show people how to make money too. So here's the difference in what I think you're not realizing what we're talking about. We're not just saying we want to be people's financial advisors. We're showing people how to be able to start a business, to be able to create financial independence for yourself. Not just investment, not just allowing investments to be the only means that you can create financial independence, but having a business that you can get leverageable income, that you can have money without working a job and allowing that by educating other people, showing other people how to be able to do the same thing that you know how to do, how to be able to make a business I have uh, people that are in business with me, $1.5 million, a gentleman, him and his wife, the Fumbos, they're from Sierra Leone. They've been in business with us for four years. They, they worked in the medical field. His wife is an anesthesiologist. He's a nurse practitioner. They now make $1.4 million and they did not have a background in financing. None of those things, but that's not the impressive part. The impressive part is they have over 50 people that they've now got up to over half a million dollars of income. And it didn't have anything to do with investing in the stock market or any of that stuff. It just came from educating people on finances. 
just like we do. So what I'm saying is, you know, look, at, at the end of the day, sis, look, there's more than one way to skin a cat, as I started off. At. I just saw that comment, Dinus. Shut up. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, just, I just saw it. That's why I just, I, just, you know, I got to read it first while I put it up. So. Yeah, but, but that does make me think about starting my own channel. It's just that, to be honest, yeah, because my, yeah, start unlike your own, you. Start your own channel. We'll, we'll come on there. Me and Yisha will come on your channel and argue with you. Yeah, yeah no, no, no. But unlike. Uh, well, I'm not going to come on and argue. No, I'm, no. I'm but, not going to bring value. I'm not. I'm not gonna come on. <laughs> it it certainly crazy. would not That's be crazy. a finance channel because, to be quite honest, it's just what I do because it oh, well. puts me in the best situation. I'm more That's or it. less. My interest you, is really. I don't help. go on no channels. That's not finance. I like talking about this subject. This is this is one of my favorite subjects in the world because I know um, I worked 18 years in the hospital uh, and I, I learned how to do a bunch of complex surgeries on people. But here's what I realized. After they finished with their surgery, they had to pay the bill. And if they weren't in a position where they can take care of their finances, they went from stressing out over their health to stressing out how to pay the medical bill. Yeah, so that's what my focus is. My focus is really, if I did start a channel, it would be all about health and wellness um, because I'm a stickler for taking good care of yourself so you can stay away from mm -hmm. having those procedures, having the hypertension, the diabetes, and all of those other um, health outcomes, negative health health outcomes that so many, unfortunately, um, Black Americans experience due to high stress and just the living conditions that some people find themselves in. So that is really my passion. But I am going to bow out of this conversation, and I hope that people watching got something from this, specifically Black American women, because I, more than any group, Black American women when you look at the data, are not investing, uh, you know, that's, in that that's angle. Not too, sis. Let's okay. let's not be monolithic. Let's because look, at the end of the day, we as a society of people have got to the position where we're at because we became individuals. We became black men and black women instead of the black family. Instead that's of that's true. But I, when I made that point, sir, I was just referring to a lot of times black women do shy away from. Um, the business aspect, if you will, the investing aspect, because for so long, you know, when you look at the faces of people who were really um, in the industry, primarily it, it is a lot of men of all colors, all races. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but it's not a lot of men of all colors. It's been I, Caucasian I, men. So that, yeah, I don't agree with that either, sis. In, in, your shop, in, in summer, in, in our organization, there are plenty of sisters who are successful. In fact, me oh, and yeah. Yishak's boss, well, I would say boss. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Executive yeah. marketing director. Uh, no, I, I meant, I, I wasn't talking people. about success. I meant in terms of investing. Like one no, of I mean, my and heroes they, is, and is and Melody have, Hobson, you know, from Ariel. In a, you yeah. know, Melody Hobson, like that. Yeah. I just, I love her. And, yeah. but There's I'm saying in that. that you don't know their name, sis, and they're doing extremely well financially. No, I didn't mean well financially. I meant, I meant. And investing. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, I meant just like at the top of the game and in investing people I'm that actually you don't know their name if they're investing and they don't get on podcasts and different things of that nature. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. There are right. a lot of there are a lot of influential black women that are investors and understand financial properties. So that it would be great to um if you could share, you know, their names or something okay, to that. Hey, let me interject, Summer. If you go into my archives, I've okay. had I had uh, Nikki Candy. Come, I had Nikki Candy come on twice, um, on this show. She's been on the show twice. Yeah. In fact, I love to have her to call in, and you, you're more than welcome to call in. So. I would. Can you let me know when you do? Um, definitely let yeah. me know. I'll send you. I'll send you one of the videos that she's in as well. And we have about eight other women that are in that same video, and you'll you'll see her on there as well. You'll see those other eight women too. That's part of our company. Yeah, yeah, but Nikki, but Nikki Cannon has definitely been on Nikki Cannon has been on this platform twice, two or three times. So okay. success. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for having me on the show. Um All right, take sir. care. It's like you are you are uh you are a uh, unseen uh, uh speaker as well. Thanks for yes, coming. Yes, but when I'll tell you what, when I launch my um blog, my health and wellness blog, as well as um I'll at some point do a few cooking shows, that sort of thing, I'll send um my channel information to Dinah. It's not that I think he's, I want to use him to promote it or anything, but yeah. um, 
just because I, I have some, so many ideas. Some food too. I'm sorry. I said you gotta send us some food. Oh, here we go. Yeah, send me some food. <laughs> You, you gotta I have some great food. recipes that yeah, I can so share, can some yeah, really yeah. very so, easy uh, recipes. So the recipes so we could taste the food as well. Yeah, because I definitely see YouTube as a potential additional stream of income. I've been yeah. <laughs> looking into how much people just by putting up videos consistently. Oh, be careful now because they changed the whole monetization of YouTube now, sister. So it's not it's not the YouTube of yesterday. <laughs> yeah, but just from a marketing standpoint, especially when you have your own, you know, products, and I sell from Etsy as well as Amazon. I would, I would talk to I would talk to Dinus because he has a YouTube, so he he's very familiar with that. Uh, I'm, I'm using YouTube primarily, uh, of course, for people to for get marketing and, and marketing and, products mm -hmm. too. So, but exactly, I mean, I, yeah. I don't want people to find value. I want to give them value so they could, you know, buy as well. You know. By your your products, right? And that's yeah, what I, yeah. the thing is, I'm, I'm vertically integrating everything. Like mm -hmm. I, it's just you know, people, hey, Dinos, can I come market this, market that? I'm like, well, if I got my own products and, and services, why not I just do it myself? Unless you know, depending on what you're offering. But yeah, I want to. As far as with the brand, Dinos and me, I'm, I'm trying to vertic vertical integrate as much as possible. So, is your ultimate goal, Dinos, to move to Nigeria at some point, or? Uh, not, so Sierra Leone and Nigeria are going to be headquarters. You know. So for uh, for what I'm doing, but uh, you know, Africa is definitely uh, my future, and the the future really, but definitely my uh, my future. So at the same time, I think the important part, the conversation that for some reason uh, we continue to uh, avoid is the whole uh, when it comes to finances when in, in Africa. And you just see uh, a lot of times, and uh, and the problem is the people who. I want to watch my words carefully. Who struggled the most in Africa have the biggest platforms, and so unfortunately, so uh, I just want to make sure that when people go over, you know, that they have the, the finances and the resources. Uh, so that's why we uh, we do what we do because I think that's the part that people, for some reason, just don't want to address or they want to avoid or you know the capitalism is evil conversation comes up and. We got to rework this, rework that. Capitalism is, is, ism is not going to work. But I'm like, dude, look, at the end of the day, when you move to Africa and, <laughs> and, and, and you're renting your apartment, the Ghanaian, the Nigerian, the Gambian, Senegalese, uh, uh, Malian, <laughs> the Sierra Leonean, Liberian, they're going to knock it. They're going to want their money. Ain't no Pan African, I'm marking garbage. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, you know, Mark, I read Marcus Garvey and Nana and Kwame Nkrumah's books, and they inspired me to come, brother. No, they want their money, and they'll and they'll take USD. They'll take they'll take USD as well, as long as the local currency. So, I think that's the um, uh, I, I think that's the the area that I really want to focus on. It's just it's, it's I mean it's we just we have to be adults and mature about it now. And I think again in this space we're very immature and ignorant about it. Um. Uh, and it's to the point now. It's like it's on purpose. It's like a a, a a symbol of pride to say I'm anti this, anti that, anti this, anti that. Living on the land, you know, you know. It's just, and I'm just like, nah, we're not. I'm not. I'm not going out like that. So therefore, uh, you know, I'm gonna put out the make sure I put out the information and opportunities. You know, there's no one size fit all. I'm not saying what me and your shock does. I'm not saying that's the end all be all. That's why I bring for Sherald on here, other opportunities on here. I show people how to make their own products, you know, investments. So, you know, it's it's just again the you know, the watch guy, just this idea that the you know, again, this conversation is is is, a, is being avoided. And it, the thing is, like I tell you, shop in this space, we got some of the most brightest people ever, and just I've ever smarter than Nikola Tesla. Just we have some of the most smart, <laughs> brightest people. But when it comes to this finance uh subject, it, it finance in Africa is just like they don't want to have the conversation. It's just it, it's a struggle fetish. There we go. It's a struggle fetish. It's a struggle fetish. Yeah. And so, see that was my concern, uh Dinus, with what I was watching when I was watching those videos is that but it makes sense to me because how can people be successful in a total different space if in their original space they didn't take the time to have that um, interest and, and get that education in financial management, doing a budget, 
planning, preparing, all of those things, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Summer should yeah, see Travel Hunter in good faith. And the great thing, Summer, like we offer all of this. Like we offer all of this. I mean, you have a group of African center brothers and sisters that we offer all of this. But at the same time, I'm not saying that it's the end all be all. But you know, me personally, I just it's at a point now. I would kind of in this space, I was shy away from saying I'm a capitalist or, you know, you know, finances and making money is important because you offend some people. But now I'm like, nah, man, I just I'm not going out like that. I'm a yeah. capitalist. I say that with pride. I'm 100 mm percent -hmm. a capitalist. It has I'm given me a level of freedom that I have. I, you know, didn't have, um, you know, before the knowledge came. And I think specifically during these times, more than ever to have assets and to, you know, have resources that you can draw on like that. That's that's so essential because it gives you options in the event that you do have to uh, move to a different state or you decide to relocate out of the country. You have options. You, you're not just someone who is living day by day, not really having a, a concrete plan with resources. So that that was just really it. But again, thank you. I know I've been saying that for some time. I'm getting ready to put dinner on now. And I hope again that your viewership and your guests um, that they saw this conversation as worthwhile. I saw it as worthwhile because I am, even though, you know, I'm going to, you know, do some research. Send me your information if you can. Uh, Dinas has my email. Um, so please feel free to send I'm over that you, information. Worry, I'll take the time you to. You're going to get it. <laughs> okay, I'll read through it. I'm gonna make sure you get the information. I love it. I love sharing information. And one thing that I want to say, I don't want you to think because a lot of people might have been saying this in the comments. I have not read any of the comments that I'm challenging you because. Oh, okay. So, I I can't yeah. either. But that I'm challenging I, you because you're yeah, black I don't, man. I don't have any conversation by way of comments. I'm 50 years old. I'm not a I'm not a comment inspired type person. I speak off my own heart. I don't, I don't allow I don't allow a comment to to hype me up. No, but do you see where I'm going with this? Like that the whole divide thing with black men and black oh, women that I'm just challenging yeah. you just to challenge you. And that's not true. I don't I, it could yeah. be anyone. Don't I'm always worry, going yeah. to pose questions and and you know I don't feel want that to way. find out. Okay. Yeah, that that's all I, certain, I don't feel that way. I don't know what other people feel. I don't feel that way. Well, that's important to me because like I said, I was not coming on this show, this program to be disrespectful. You yeah. have your business. I'm respectful of the fact that you have your business. And so I was not in any way, shape or form trying to take away from Just your years of understanding or your research. Why do you think you've been talking for this long? Because I like you it. sense that. You know that yeah, I, I like wasn't. I, was, I like it. That's why we've been talking this long, you know, because I know you don't mean any harm. I know you don't. I don't. And I know the opposite of space. I know you're not coming from a space that you're trying to, you know, do anything other than talk about what it is that you believe in. Yes. And, and what only, worked for me as yeah. well. And, only and what point, worked for me. The only point that we separate on is that I don't think that any of us have the, the ability in life. Um, I don't think any of us have the silver bullet to kill the werewolf or the vampire or whatever it is that the silver bullet kills. I don't think any of us have that ability to say that anything that we're doing is the end all to be all. That's the only thing that we differ on. I'm just saying, I agree with you in what you're saying. I agree with you that what you're saying is a strategy that people can benefit from. The only thing that we disagree on is that there are other strategies that other people have utilized that has been just as or even more beneficial for them, and they didn't do indexing. That's all I'm saying. Okay, well, fair enough, fair enough. I certainly got your point and you got mine. Of so, of course. All right, so you guys have a great evening. You take care. And don't all forget right. to send those recipes. I, you know, not only am I going to send the recipes, I'm in the process of getting ready to um, revamp my blog site and get that published and everything. Yeah. Um, and yeah. once I do that, all of that information, yeah, we'll the come cookbook on. Book recipe is going yeah. to be there. So we'll, yeah, we'll come um, on, man. We'll come on. My wife uh, 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 cooks food from Trinidad. She cooks very, very good uh, Caribbean food. So you know, we'll share some recipes with you. Sounds great. All right. Yeah. All, right, All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.
All right, Yasha. We'll go ahead and close out, man. Hey, man, I'll tell you one thing. Without a shadow of a doubt. Listen, Dinus, like the sister said, if I did not have financial independence, I would not have spent three hours and 33 minutes and Me 53 too. seconds on this podcast. I, But I do love it. I, you know, and just like the sister um, alluded to, you know, this thing right here, finances is so very important. And I love the fact that she's so passionate about what she's talking about. The only thing, and like I told her, the only thing is we can't become so passionate that we close our minds off to other things. All right. Because if we do, we won't be able to pivot when the change comes, when the market turns, when all of the things come that, you know, I mean, you know, she's at a half a million dollars of money that she's garnished inside of her investments. But mm -hmm. sis, there's people who have had much more money than you who've lost every single bit of it in the market. So, I mean, half a million dollars in an investment strategy over 10 years of time, you're not breaking the bank. So just understand that you have to be open to different strategies because any investor will tell you, you have to have a balanced portfolio. The reason why you have to have a balanced portfolio is because every strategy is not good for every time. Mm -hmm. So you just have to be prepared. That's all. Yeah. So guys, everyone, thank you so much for joining. And also in the chat rooms, my link, uh, click on the link, sign up, send me an email. Let's further the discussion in regards to this um, financial, we'll call it, I don't want to limit it to just African financial, yeah. crusade, but you know, this financial crusade, this, um, you know, self-help, this, what, what we're doing. Uh, so let's uh, further the conversation, send me a message. Also link is in the description, link scrolling at the bottom of the ticker on the bottom of the screen. Everyone, thank you so much for joining. Until next time, family. Also, make sure you go to dinosaurmirror.com and we have the tour coming up April 21st to the 30th. Until next time, family. Dinosaurmirror, search for Huru. Peace.